organization or NSPO to the list and open remark on this occasion. Please, Mr. Eddie. Uh, good morning, everyone. Here I would like to represent NALAB to welcome you come to the Taiwan Data Cube workshop. Uh, open Data Cube is an open tool to facilitate the development and the application and many uh, issues like uh, names, uh, land cover change, uh, water resource monitoring, and the forest monitoring, uh, etc. The forest. Uh, NALAB has been developing and uh, launching the uh, open data in the last uh, years. In Taiwan, we already host many uh, 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 workshops in Taiwan, and uh, right now we have uh, about 20 users. Uh, we also have uh, uh, a workshop for the uh, uh, international, like uh, we have in uh, two times in Thailand and uh, one in the Philippines. Uh, uh, some in the Southeast Asia country. Uh, actually, we plan to promote uh, more uh, workshop to the other AEC country as well. Uh, and we also deliver the Open Data Cube workshop to the South America, like uh, uh, Peru or in the uh, uh, um, And then the first cross co uh, countries uh, joint program is also based on the uh, Open Data Cube. Uh, 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 based on uh, the is uh, Thailand and, and Taiwan, we do uh, uh, petty lens uh, uh, use detection user data queue technique. Uh, it's a uh, hold by the uh, leg tech from Lasta and the uh, SPO from uh, NALAB Taiwan. Uh, we hope we have a more uh, this kind of uh, project uh, in the uh, near future. Again, through this uh, workshop, uh, some uh, uh, so, uh, some valuable experience and the uh, practice will be introduced to the international part, uh, participants. Uh, part the we are going to have uh, an open to have more international uh, cooperation uh, based on this uh, technique. Uh, finally, I would like to thank all the uh, uh, today's presenta uh, presentation. I think the four from the Taiwan side and the one from the Thailand side. And also thank you all you uh, participants that come to the Taiwan uh, data Q workshop. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Eddy. And next, uh, we are pleased to have uh, Mr. Borchen to be our speaker. And uh, he is the member team of NSPO International Collaboration Division. So please welcome Mr. Bo to present NSPO introductions. Can you open the, the, the share uh, the share button here? Because right now we cannot share our uh, PowerPoint file. Chachana? We do it now, okay. Yes, you can change uh, share your, your your presentation now. You should share to to us to to wait. Again, please. I I I said you to be the P center. You can share your file. Your file now. <laughs> Sorry, uh, because I, we need to share our presentation file, but we don't have a, have the privilege to to share. Our share icon is gray out. So, is that possible possible to open the Privilege to let us share the PowerPoint file. Can, you can push the chair. Yeah. 
Can you try again? <笑>你這個下去的去嗎 Mr. Bo, can you send me a file to from to Mr. Eddie? Uh, Eddie, send it to me. I'll <laughs> send send 大家說的 file. Ah, uh, 比如說要的那個,那個最棒的沒有檔案。啊? Because this, uh, uh, we cannot share from our side, from NCO side. The button is uh, is uh, blank. You cannot click the button by the. Double, can you give the file to Eddie and Eddie send to me, please? <laughs> <laughs> <笑>你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你
Hello? Can you see the, my presentation? Yes. Yes, we see. So you can proceed. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Then I'll proceed. Uh, okay. Uh, it's about NSPO. Uh, we are under Ministry of Science and Technology. And, and uh, our mother organization is uh, National Applied Research Laboratories. NSPO is one of the eight centers under Knowledge. We are located in Sinchu Science Park, which is uh, about uh, one hour driving range from Taipei. And uh, we have headquarters which is located in on uh, eight to 10th floor of this uh, high rise building. And adjacent, we have a uh, satellite integration and test facilities. And role and vision. Uh, our role is serve as a national space agency in Taiwan. And to conduct the space missions for Taiwanese government. And we also responsible for the space technology uh, research and development. During the year established on 1991, which is uh, three decades ago. During these three decades, uh, we have uh, developed series of satellites, including the starting from former set one and it's two and three, five, seven. And uh, currently we, we are uh, <clears throat> working on uh, Triton and former set eight. And later I would uh, have to cover these uh, satellite programs in more details. Uh, during the past three decades, we have uh, developed uh, supporting uh, facilities in order to uh, support all the, uh, the satellite missions. Uh, we have uh, TTNC stations, and mission control and mission data processing centers. We are capable, capable of uh, develop and establish all these uh, facilities all by ourselves. And this is our long-term uh, space program, the <clears throat> roadmap, uh, starting from 2019, we are entering into third phase program. And in the third phase program, we have uh, four main missions. The one, the first one is we call the Formosa 8, which is a high resolution remote sensing satellites. The resolution is a uh, one meter and one meter to 0.7 meters, which will have uh, six, six satellites. Uh, the first one will be launched in uh, 2023. And the second mission is, uh, we call it Formal Set 9, it's a some meter satellite constellation. Uh, the resolution is 0.35, and uh, there will be a total of two satellites in the constellation. And the third one is a uh, radar satellite constellation, SAR. Uh, we, the code name is Formal Set 10. And then we will also have a uh, fourth one is the deep space exploration, which uh, intend to utilize the CubeSat technology and, and uh, 
all the innovative ideas. And in addition to the primary missions, we, we also have a secondary missions, which is uh, uh, sounding rocket programs. And during the third phase, we will we schedule to launch a series of sounding rockets. And in addition to those uh, programs, we also have uh, newly assigned uh, uh, missions, uh, which is uh, come from the, the very top uh, government uh, authorities, which is the uh, executive yen of uh, Taiwan. And this uh, mission is, is called uh, the Beyond 5G DO communication programs. And uh, in addition to all these uh, missions, we still have some uh, satellites programs, which is uh, uh, established and, and developed in the second phase. For example, we have former set five and former set seven constellation, which is already launched. And, and uh, we also have three CubeSats launched in this year. And we have a Triton satellite will be launched in 2022. Okay, uh, the Triton uh, is a, a wind hunter satellite, uh, which is 100% uh, manufactured by NSPO. And the uh, main feature is a uh, 300 kilogram class satellites. And, and uh, there's a, a series of uh, components developed by uh, Taiwan local industries, which will be uh, demo and tested in this mission. And this mission will be the, the, the satellite will be launched in 2022. And the uh, set A program is the main program of the surface. Uh, it served as the follow-on mission of former set five. Uh, it plans to develop six remote sensing satellites with a uh, one meter resolution and also featured with dynamic video recording. And uh, the goal is to have both global coverage and multiple local revisit over Taiwan per day. And uh, former said, as I said, it has six satellites. The its whole name is former set eight 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 to to F A B C D E F yes. So the former set A and B plan to it, okay. So it's planned to be launched in starting from twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four respectively. And later we will have uh, one set launch uh, each year. In this program, we develop 15 key components locally. And the next big, uh, the next major the program is so-called Beyond 5G. Leo communication program. Uh, the goal is to promote the, the growth of domestic uh, satellite communication industry. And uh, we will launch one uh, satellite as a, a test bed uh, to facilitate the ground 
uh, industry to develop it, their capabilities and, and demonstrate to the world and develop the, the commercial the opportunities. And I said, this one will be launched in 2025. And uh, then we would, uh, through commercial uh, cooperation, uh, to build additional six satellites uh, from local uh, partners. And the final constellation will be the complete in 2030s. And one of the major the effort is satellite data applications. During the previous uh, satellite programs, we have uh, accumulated a lot of the uh, data, satellite data, including the remote sensing data uh, from former set two and five, and also weather prediction data from former set three and seven. All of them have been uh, uh, established in, in uh, 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 our, our data servers and um, various of uh, application has been built to utilize this application, including the one was uh, discussed today, the data cube. Okay, and then the evolution of space probe development in Taiwan. During past three decades, uh, in fact, uh, bef before NSPO established on 1991, uh, we are in the phase of utilization of satellite data. And since NSPO built, then we entering into the introduction of space technology. And then in the next 10 years, we try to a solving of space technology. Now in the third phase, we are entering into the definition of space technology to establish our uh, local space industry. Um, we have, to do that, we have established so-called Taiwan Space Industry Development Association in 2019. We now have uh, group members of 41 companies. And this is the Taiwan supply chain distribution, all the way from upstream, midstream to downstream. And uh, finally, uh, we are committed to pursue as a center of excellence and innovation of space technologies. And we're very welcome the international friends who join us and uh, let's uh, pursue this uh, goal together. And thank you, that's my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Boven. Uh, so next, uh, we are pleased to have Miss Charlotte to be our speaker, and she is now currently um, an engineer of NSPO. So, Ms. Charlotte will present the overview and framework of Taiwan Data Cube. Please, Ms. Charlotte. Okay, 
，这个是桌面，所以它会变成变成两格啊。对，好，不然我就来一个。这个演讲稿我看得到，是，你要你要看到演讲稿。哦，那我们没有钱。嗯 ，OK， 好，他看到。嗯。Good morning, everyone. Oh,、uh, can you hear me? Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Morning, everyone. My name is Charlotte. Today, I'll give a presentation about the overview and framework of Taiwan Data Cube. First of all, I will introduce about the development of Earth observation data and the launch satellites. And then I will give an overview of the concept of open data queue and several applications. Later, I'll take some time to talk about the structure of Taiwan Data Cube. This chapter will include the procedure of Data Cube ingestion and the Data Cube Web UI. In that, in less, there are some Jupyter notebooks, Python tutorial about the Data Cube. During these few years, the request of Earth observing system data and the information system grows exponentially. Let's take a look at this graph. Uh, from 2015 to 2017, the volume of achieved data grew from around 10 petabytes to almost 22 petabytes. This means the request of Earth observing system data grows more than double. On the other hand, during these few decades, the volume of Earth observing system data increased significantly due to amount of satellites launched. This means the lack of data is no longer the limitation for Earth observation. However, the size and the weight of the launched satellites become smaller and lighter. Let's take a look at this graph. Uh, in this graph, from 1993 to 2017, the, the amount of satellites grows from one to more than 200. But the weight becomes lighter and the size becomes low, uh, smaller, it becomes a trend for large satellites. With the desire of Earth observation data analysis and the management, New computing infrastructure techniques and the data architectures are developed and contribute. This is the reason why Open Data Cube become a popular approach to deal with Earth's observation data. However, the, uh, the volume of the Earth's observation data is too large. It's difficult to download it to a personal computer. Let's take a look at these two pictures. If a user wants to download this satellite data to its PC, it may take 39 years to download it. This means the user can just come home and uh, take a break for 39 years, uh, just waiting for the download. Therefore, Open Data Queue access and manage satellite data set through Jupyter Notebook they become a, a simple way to manage and, um, and analyze this data set. The Open Data Queue in initiative is mainly supported by Australian government Geoscience Australia and the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites and the other four institutes. It's a concept about the structure used for analyze and the store of satellite data. It can be applied in multi-temporal and multi-satellite data analyze. Open Data Queue is an open source tool used to manage, analyze, and operate satellite data. It is also facilitated for the management and of set database and the utility of multi-sequential data. It's a set of Python library and the PostgreSQL database, which facilitates for working with large volume of razor data. 
open data queue can access satellite data to Python 3 script through web server. Open data queue supply a framework and make mu uh, multiple user access multiple satellite data in the same time. This means open data queue can realize the data sharing. But think about a case. Uh, a user want to upload its own private data to its private data queue, but he don't want to share it with other users. How can open data queue realize the case just like this? In the following chapter, we'll talk about the Taiwan data cube, which will uh, solve the problem just like this. Data cube contains lots of satellite data, including Landsat, Satellite, and MODIS, which supply a huge information about Earth's observation. For example, multi-temporal data and multi-satellite data of a specific place can be applied and analyzed. We apply this information to perform comparison and analyze. The satellite data can apply in illegal mining, wide file, and the deforestation, and so on. Let's take a look at two examples about application of data queue. The first example is about the wildfire in Paris. We apply multiple, sequ uh, multiple sequential data, satellite data, and uh, it calculate the NDVI and the NMDI spectral index. We use this spectral index to predict the location and the geometric range and the trend of wildfire in paragraphs. This analyze will supply an important information about wildfire control. Another example is about the banana disease detection. We apply multi-temporal image data to calculate NDVI and the EVI spectral index. We use in this index to detect the change of chlorophy in banana leaves and analyzes the banana disease of banana in Taiwan. However, the raw data derived from satellites cannot be accessed by data queue directly. It should be pre-processed uh, to an analysis-ready data first. Pre-processes include angle correction and the geometric normalization. With this process, the raw data can be transformed into another format, which can be ingested into data queue in the next, next step. In the following step, the analyzed ready data will be ingested into the data queue and accessed by the Python script. Actually, injection procedure is a complex process. We will talk about this process later in detail. This picture just shows the original structure of open data queue. In the traditional structure, all the satellite data should be stored in a physical storage. With the large volume of satellites, the, spec uh, the specification of the hardware should be in a high level to compile and store this data set. Even though there are many, uh, this means, uh, this means even though there, there are many, many uh, powerful uh, analytical tool installed in open, open data queue. A powerful computer is still necessary to open data queue. To overcome this difficult hardware threshold, Taiwan data queue is introduced to solve this problem. Different from the traditional structure of open data queue, Taiwan Data Queue is the combination of Open Data Queue and the HPC Cloud. With more than 2,000 GPU chips and a high level VM server in TWCC, Taiwan Data Queue can access and compile the satellite data quickly. Taiwan Data Queue manages all data, all data cube in different database through TWCC VM server. With Vivian private license key, every user can build out its private data queue. 
This private data queue can access data set from other open source data queue. User can also upload its private data to its private data queue. If a user want to share this private data to others, uh, a li license sharing can realize li this goal. This means Taiwan Data Queue can not only realize uh, data sharing, but also cybersecurity in the same time. Taiwan Data Queue collect immutable satellite data in Formosa 5, Formosa 2, Lensa 7, Lensa 8, and the Sentinel one and Sentinel two. Taiwan Data Queue also can support analyze ready data ingestion and the time series comparison. This comparison include multi sequential data query and the multiple satellite data query. This means multi temporal data and the multiple satellite data for a specific place can be acquired and analyzed in the same time. This also implies multi-dimensional data analysis can be realized through Taiwan Data Queue. Taiwan Data Queue supplies lots of analytical tools for satellite data, include data management and query. This management include data query and the data type management and the data modification. Taiwan Data Queue also supports data collection and output. This function include data in image output, complex image data output, and the multi-sequential attribute query. There are also several analytical tools installed in Taiwan Data Queue, include NDVI, NDWI, NDBI, and the other spectral index in analytical tool. Taiwan Data Queue also support customized application. This customized analysis can be developed through web server or Python scripts. Now, I will take some time to introduce about the procedure of data queue injection. Most of the time, the original data, uh, data derived from analysis ready data has the file of geometric, uh, geotiff or net CDF file. But actually, this file is unreadable by data queue. This file is also, uh, is also invalid for analysis at all. Therefore, the injection procedure is introduced to transform this analysis ready data to another format, which can be accessed by, by data queue and compiled by Python script. For example, Although every uh, analysis ready data has its own file name and other related metadata, it is unreadable for data queue. Therefore, index ID is suggest to list this data set. What's the index ID? All data set can be older and compiled by Python script. The picture on the right hand side is the full chart of the procedure of data queue ingestion. We'll talk about this procedure in detail in the next few pages. The process of ingestion includes three, three steps. First of all, before all analysis data be adding to the data set. All metadata sharing the same characteristic should be well defined in a sharing YML file. On the other hand, all metadata, every metadata contain its own unique characteristic should also be rewritten in a unique YML file. After these two steps, the analysis ready data will be transformed in a new index data set and add to the data queue. The last step of process, uh, ingestion procedure is to define the input data set type and the output, output data set characteristic. This attribute contains the, mm, the file size and the resolution and so on. This PPT slides just show the first step of ingestion procedure. 
in the first procedure, all, all metadata sharing the same, same attribute should be well defined in a sharing YML file. This sharing characteristic may include format, bands, instrument, and the product types. And then all metadata uh, contain its uh, its unique attribute should also be rewritten in a unique YML file. This unique attribute may contain the time, location, solar, and the sensor angle. After these two steps, the analysis ready data can be transformed into an index data set and add to the uh, data queue. The last process of the ingestion is to define the input input data data type and the output data characteristic. This procedure includes the parameterized the partition size, project angle, resolution, and boundary. First, these few steps. The original analysis ready data can be transformed into index data and uh, ingest into the open data queue. Actually, all characteristic and attribute of the data set can be found out in the data cube UI. Now, I will talk about the Taiwan data cube web UI. This picture just shows the proto of Taiwan data cube. There are several analytical functions and a visualized tool installed inside. This picture shows the data queue visualization function. This function visualizes and browses available data on an interactive map. With this map, all valid uh, data set ingest in a private data queue can be shown up. Furthermore, this, in, this valid data, data set can be filtered by the temporal range and uh, by the data set type. This picture shows the data set type in Taiwan Data Queue, data queue Web UI. This function displays a list of all data types defined in Data Queue. This data type will include product name, platform, instrument, product type, measurement, and other description. Actually, these data types are the attribute defined in ingest process, process previously. If a user wants to take a look and at the product, we should uh, click the view data set button on the right hand side and jump to jump to the web page just like this. This page just uh, called data set viewer. This data set viewer uh, is a list of every question in the data in the data queue organized by data set. The result can also be filtered by temporal and the geometric range and the product types. This picture shows the data set installed in a private data queue. Next, I will introduce a powerful tool called Custom Mosaic Tool. It's a function used to patch up a data image output. Let's take a look at an example in next view page. In this picture, the image just show the image data in Xinzhu city taken on November 21st, 2018. In this picture, we found that it's cloudy. Several parts in this picture is disappear and masked by the, by the cloud. And let's take a look at another picture. This picture just shows the image data in the same place taken on December 17, 2018. We can find that although it's sunny, but a part of the image in the upper right side is, is disappeared. If, if we use the custom mosaic tool, these two pictures are combined. In fact, custom mosaic tool take the union of two image data and uh, present a complete picture of this data image. However, if we take a look in detail of this picture, we can find that the uh, several part on the upper right side is still invisible. Since the 
the two in uh, two image data data originally is uh uh since these two this several part in the original data is still invisible therefore the output cannot cannot see this this several picture this several part at all now I'll take a long short time to talk about the Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is a web server which make user create and compile Python document easily. It can also apply, supply a function to let user manage document and file. If a user want to create a new new Python Python document, it can use a new Click button on the, on the upper right side and then create a new button, uh, document. In the new document, there are several click buttons on the upper left side. This button facilitates for adding, cutting, copy, and paste the cell. This cell can also be compiled and saved through this click button. To start up a Python script, we should import several Python library package and the data set. After a batch of Python script is finished, we can use shift enter to compile this Python script. In the last chapter, we'll uh, take some, uh, give some tutorial about Jupyter Notebook data queue. But actually it's an oral presentation. All the tutorial will be present through the PPT slides. I think my teammates will present a demo and demo this tutorial later and give a presentation in detail about this tutorial. To start up a data cube construction, uh, several Python library package and the data cube configuration should be imported. And then uh, we can use Python script to list up all the product in, installed in the private data cube. We can use Python script to pick up the product in the uh, install in the private private data queue. The file following Python script just show up the geometric bridge range and the temporal range of of the product you choose. Actually, this product can also be visualized through the Python script just like this. But notice about that. Before we use this Python script, a special uh, a special data cube visualize tool pack should be imported in Python. And then the product you choose can be visually uh, show up visually through the Google Earth. After you choose up the product and define the temporal range and the geometric range. The result can be show up through Python script just like this. We notice about that the saturation of the image is a parameter. It should be well defined in the Python script. Also, the result can be exported as a JTIF or PNG file and stored in a specific route and the location in a Jupyter notebook. In the end, there is a simple application about Python data cube. It's a cloud filter. Most of the time, an image contains too, too much cloud is not a good, good candidate for uh, Earth observation. So we should skip up this image before analysis. The Python, uh, the Python code in here supply a selection for cloud picture. Notice about that the percentage of clear part in an image is a party uh, is a parameter. It should be well defined in this Python script. Let's take a look at example. Before we use a uh, cloud filter, the original data set contains 31 image data. However, after we use uh, cloud filter and set up the percentage of of the cloud filter, there are only four only four files files contain contain less than twenty percent cloud in the image is list 
and it can be show up just like this in the PPT file. Well, I think it's my presentation just like this, and there are some reference here. And uh, now I think, are there ever, anyone has the question? Okay. Uh, thank you, Miss Charlotte, for your insightful experience to share with us. And probably if anyone has a question, you can send to the chat uh, Q&A as well. If for now, uh, there is no question yet. Thank you. Okay, so we may proceed. Um, so next, we please to have Dr. Zhang Li Yu to be our speaker. He is currently associate uh, researcher, satellite image division of NSPO. Dr. Zhang has interest and specialty in photogram photogrammetry, digital image processing, and GIS for environmental remote sensing. So please, Dr. Zhang will present the ARD preparation and use it in Taiwan data cube. Okay. So it, uh, is my voice okay right now? You call it, uh, uh, yeah. So okay. please. Okay. So, Okay, so uh, so please let me start my presentation here. Okay, so my voice is clear, right, for everyone. Everything clear. Okay, so uh, so my top here topic here is talking about uh, how to prepare uh, and uh, integrate integrate our ARD data to Taiwan Data Cube. So uh, here is the content of my presentation. Um, at the very first, uh, I will uh, say something about the pre-processing of our remote sensing data. And uh, uh, there are different kinds of set of data here. For example, our Formosa set data and the Sentinel-2 data and even a Sentinel-1 star data. Different kind of set of image has different uh, pre-processing steps I will go uh, to detail in my following style slides. And then uh, I will say something about how to in integrate our ARD data to our Taiwan data cube. Because different, there are different kind of SELA, SELA data. Uh, the, the, the method to integrate those data into uh, TWDC Taiwan data cube may be different. So I will say, also say something about this part. And then uh, after the data is uh, in, uh, is ready in our Taiwan data cube, then we have to have some ways to uh, export or analyze this data uh, with our data cube command. I also uh, I will also say something about this part. And then I will uh, uh, use uh, uh, some very simple applications to uh, demo how to use. Uh, our data cube. So uh, here is the first part of our uh, how to how is the pre-processing of uh, our remote sensing data in data cube, and uh, this part is especially for the for more subset two or five optical images. Uh, in this part, we uh, process our for more data data into uh, we saw more TOAR table and atmospheric refractance. And uh, uh, because uh, uh, the, uh, the data, I mean, the ground information received cell data will be affected by our atmospheric conditions. And uh, there are some parameters we need to consider the, when we uh, take image of our ground object. For example, the refractance uh, of our uh, ground target and uh, the solar incident angle when we take the image and the sensor view angle 
and uh, some of atmospheric related uh, parameters. And then we also have to uh, consider the refractance uh, due to the uh, looking angles, because we, we know that uh, the, the ground target is not a perfect refractor. So sometimes uh, the, the refracted energy or radiance is different in different angles. So we, we also have to collect the, the, the property, properties of this, of this kind of information, so then we can uh, do uh, the corrections. And uh, this is a, a very simple uh, equations to estimate TOAR. Majorly, we can and we need to, of, of course, we need to have our sensor gain and bias. Then we can convert our digital number of image to uh, the radiance. And then uh, we can use uh, the, the, the radiance and the, 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 the sounds, how to say that, and the uh, illumination of some, some solar energies. And then we can uh, uh, convert our, uh, re, I mean, the received radiance to um, uh, TOAR. Then we can use this kind of, uh, of this, this kind of parameter as the estimation of our uh, ground object. And then, uh, the reason we need to use refractance is that uh, we we always need to compare. Uh, I mean, the the ground object from different image, and the image normally is uh, taken by uh, different satellite or taken on um, different temporal period. So each 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 image has to be corrected to. Uh, to be some standard here, we use refractance. Then we can uh, do temporal analysis or uh, analysis across different sensors. And uh, this is a, a, a very simple uh, comparison between uh, the uh, digital count and uh, TOA and, and uh, the derived NDVI from different sensors. Actually, the data here is uh, uh, Formosa, Formosa Safety data and uh, uh, Spark 6 data. Uh, these two data actually taken uh, was taken in uh, very similar times. Okay, and only, maybe only uh, less than five hours differences. Normally, the, the ground won't change in this time of period. So. If we just uh, uh, convert the digital count of different sensors, here is a different bands, okay? Different bands com comparing the, the horizontal axis is the, the digital count of SPAR 6 and the, uh, the vertical axis is uh, uh, the digital count of Formosa set images. You can see that the distribution of the, uh, the pixels, the pixels is not, uh, align with the, this red line. Actually, this red line is uh, a straight line with slope equals to one and just pass through the origin. The point here, the pixel here. Okay, okay. The, actually the pixel here, the pixel here means that, uh, uh, I mean, distributed in this region means that these two data, I mean, the digital number is not consistent with these two uh, sensors. So normally, if you want to compare the data uh, across sensors in this kind of uh, parameter, I mean, digital numbers, you, you won't get any result. But if we convert everything to a TOAR type of atmospheric refractance, you can see that uh, the pixels right now uh, can can be aligned either with uh, this straight line. Uh, it is a straight line with slope equals to one and pass through origins. It means that these two satellite data right now uh, have a certain consistency. Then you can compare them uh, together. And uh, this is uh, a, a chart that we uh, compare the, the NDVI derived from each number and the derived from uh, TOAR, double and the most of it. Uh, refractance. You can see that if you derive NEVI directly from digital number, uh, you can see that the distribution, the distribution of your pixels is cannot be aligned with this red line. And then if you use the NEVI derived from uh, TOAR, then the 
NDVI right now can align with this red line. That means the consistency is better than the, the result use uh, each number. So uh, this is a, 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 a test. We use different kind of sensor to find that uh, if uh, the, 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 the the, the phonologies, I mean the temporal changes of our ground object by TOAR. Here is a, a different, different kind of sensor data here. And then we want to see the temporal variation of uh, <clears throat> the right uh, parameters, for example, NDVI. Okay, so uh, we select uh, four positions here. One and a two is a rice, a rice, petty rice field, and a three and a four. One is belongs to build up area, and uh, this one is belongs to forest area. Then you can see that uh, if we uh, uh, take a look of the data that is located in the paddy rice area, you can see the phonologies or the, the uh, NDVI uh, temporal changes it can be uh, that is a, a period of rice growing, a, rice, a, a complete period of rice growing. And then if you take a look at building and forest, and you can see that the variation is uh, rather flat here. Uh, for building area, NEVI is all, always low, and for forest area, NEVI is always high. It means that you can use this kind of temporal changes, or uh, we call that phonologies, to uh, distinguish different kind of land classes. And uh, uh, for, and then we are, now we are going to say something about pre-processing pre of uh, the Sentinel uh, optical, Sentinel 2 uh, optical uh, satellite images. For Sentinel 2 optical data, uh, normally we will use level 2A data. Actually, level 2A data is already uh, a button of atmosphere reflectance in uh, cartographic geometry. It means that uh, the uh, for for most uh, but for for uh, for Sentinel two data uh, which is a uh, uh, satellite provided by ESA, uh, they already correct everything to uh, the the refractance to the ground. We also call that uh, surface refractance. That means that we can directly use this kind of data to do uh, multi-temporal analysis. Yes. And here is a, a, a spect spectral location or spectral band of uh, Sentinel-2 data. Okay, and uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, this is an application we use. Uh, 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 maybe we, this is kind of a preliminary studies of uh, petty right detection using uh, Sentinel-2 data. And uh, because uh, Sentinel two, Sentinel two optical data here we use is level two A data. It is already uh, uh, surface refractance. So uh, once we download this data, we don't have to do any further preprocessing, and then we can just uh, ingest them to our uh, data cube. And the next, I will say something about the pre-processing of uh, Sentinel-1 SAR images. Okay, for Sentinel-1 SAR data, uh, we know that uh, which is a C-band uh, satellite uh, data, SAR data, or microwave data. Uh, actually, uh, for Sentinel-1 data, there are different kinds of uh, uh, position mode here. Okay, uh, three main more in the front of tree, one swans mode, extra one swans mode, or uh, wave mode. Normally, uh, right now, uh, the, the most data collected by Sentino one is using in the front of tree, one swans IW mode. Because within this mode, the, 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 uh, within this mode data acquisition, the data can not only use to uh, distinguish, distinguish different different classes, we can also use that uh, this kind of data to uh, do, uh, 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 how to say that, to do interferometry analysis to get uh, the, the, the uh, topographic changes, something like that. So, okay, this is uh, uh, normally IW mode acquisitions. Uh, for IW mode acquisition, normally uh, the data will be acquired in three 
uh, strips here. And then with the, by using these three, three strips, uh, 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 larger areas in image can be integrated. This is a, a video shows that uh, the acquisition situation of Senino One uh, data. So you can see that the, the data is acquired in uh, three uh, strips, and then uh, eventually it will be composed together as a, a larger areas images. Okay, right now uh, for the IW model data, we will use this kind of product, L1 SLC data. L1 SLC data actually is the uh, uh, complex, uh, single loop complex data, which uh, uh, within it, uh, in this data, uh, uh, both amplitude and phase data is uh, in this data set. But, but eventually we, we will, uh, we will uh, convert this kind of complex data to uh, amplitude, amplitude data, or uh, we call that, or maybe an, another another way to say that is uh, intensity data uh, to do uh, further analysis. Because if we uh, if we want to uh, use the star data to to analyze a ground object, and maybe intensity intensity data is enough. We don't have need the complex data. But the reason why we download the complex data here is that we can preserve the, the vacation uh, usage in the future. Because maybe in the future, we can use this kind of data to do a big analysis. So uh, if we use complex data, we can do this kind of jobs. But with, if we download uh, some other higher level data for the purchase, data, then uh, the, I mean, the, the face and the, the, the face and the intensity relation will, will no longer preserve it. So we cannot do further analysis. Okay, so, uh, and then we will convert our complex data to, to, to so-called sigma null data. Why we need sigma null? Actually, sigma null is, is something uh, very similar to uh, reflectance of optical data. Because the sigma node is, uh, we say that it's a normalized star image imagery uh, uh, can, uh, across different sensors. Then we can uh, do this kind of analysis with the sigma node. And uh, actually sigma node is, uh, uh, is uh, how to say that? It's so-called radar backscatter coefficient. So uh, again, that is a uh, normalized estimation uh, to uh, enable uh, uh, enable the analysis across different uh, star sensors. Okay, and uh, actually there is a different kind of sigma node, or, or uh, because um, actually sigma node is uh, the 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 the, 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 the uh, uh, I mean. The sigma sigma uh, over the, the effective um, areas. So uh, right now we need a, 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 a backscatters uh, uh, over a unit area to 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 I mean to perform I mean to regard it as a, a estimation of our uh, ground image a ground object uh, taken by a SAR sensors. Okay. And uh, how we uh, pro uh, process the very original uh, Senino one star data to sigma node, uh, there is a tool called uh, SNAP, which is, uh, 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 I mean, a product of ESAP. Okay. We can use uh, uh, this kind of uh, tools to, to process uh, star data to be uh, sigma node. And the which uh, within the SNAP, actually, uh, uh, here um, there are several steps to has to be performed, uh, and then uh, to I mean here there are several step steps to perform, and then eventually we can get a sigma node. Okay, uh, okay, and then uh, because uh, the, the step here is is a, a lot. And then uh, we have to do, uh, I mean, the, the job here uh, automatically because we don't have that uh, that many manpower 
okay, that much manpower to do this kind of job. So uh, we have have to to use some uh, integrated tool to do uh, to do this. Uh, I mean, the above mentioned job in a batch uh, process. Uh, in, in a batch process manner. So uh, in here, uh, we use the, the, the SNAP graphic builder to uh, connect uh, all the uh, process uh, jobs here. And then uh, we use, uh, and then the, 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 the graph builder, the output of graph builder can be an, an XML. And this, this XML can be executed by, a, how to say, uh, the, GPT graphic process tool that is a, a tool in ESA, and then we use a batch job to call uh, the GPT, and then we can do uh, uh, <clears throat> an image at once and, and a pretty whole automatic process. Okay, so uh, this is the the, the way we uh, produce uh, Sigma now for. Uh, uh, send in one solid image in a batch mode. So uh, in the next, I will say something about the data cube integration with the uh, ARD data. Okay, so uh, I think uh, most of you uh, already know what are the data cube uh, uh, through the previous uh, uh, speakers, the session of the uh, previous speakers. Okay. Actually, data cube is a time series uh, multi-dimensional uh, stack of specially nine pixels, and uh, they are ready for analysis. Okay, all the data is analysis ready, so we call the ARDs. And uh, uh, there are different kind of standards of ARD uh, should be integrated in the data cube. Actually, the standard is uh, delivered by seals. Okay. Okay, and the seals uh, have their standard, and then uh, we have to follow the standards, and then we can integrate our ARD to data cube. And uh, for the data cube integration with uh, from Formosa set and Sentinel Sentinel data, and uh, here we uh, we uh, as I said for Formosa set we use POA and the Sentinel one is best scattered coefficient, and the Sentinel two. Is a surface reflectance. So the first part is the Formosa set to five ARD, and uh, uh, because for for Formosa set to five ARD, uh, or for Formosa set to or for Formosa five is our own satellite. So there should there is no any open source can be directly applied to do the ARD preparations. So we have to do the everything by ourselves. So uh, in this part, um, uh, uh, as we know, we have to also rectify uh, all of the image at the very first. And then uh, we convert every uh, digital number to TOAR. And then we have to also pre-process uh, the, the quality index, which is, uh, a needed part of ARD. And then the final step is to import the ARD to our data cube. And uh, okay, the first part, the first part for the also uh, rectification, we in NSPO, we already have this, this, uh, this system in it with our uh, uh, seller acquisition part. So in our standard procedures, uh, all the original data, maybe we call that level zero data, can be automatically processed to be uh, a so-called level four data. The level four data is uh, uh, is uh, already is a uh, data uh, has been also ratified. So once we have this also ratified data, uh, we can use our uh, uh, TOAR. TOAR uh, processor and the uh, QI processor to uh, get the Q uh, to get TOA and QI, and then uh, we can uh, uh, prepare some uh, script needed by or needed to ingest uh, this data to data cube, which actually is uh, the, the same thing uh, presented in, in previous uh, sessions. Okay. 
Uh, once we have uh, this, uh, this prepared, and then we can ingest the, the TOAR and the QI uh, to uh, data cube. And then, okay, because uh, for the QI uh, process, there is a, a, a cloud, okay, there, there is cloud index we need to identify. So actually we have our own uh, uh, cloud cover detection uh, algorithm here to detect the cloud. Actually, uh, there, the, the method here is based on uh, a classification and the segmentation process to get uh, the cloud pixels or uh, more uh, precisely, the uh, cloud patches uh, from the original satellite images. So uh, uh, for, uh, for the next, I will say something about uh, the, uh, the data integration of uh, Senino 1 to ARD data. For Senino 1 or Senino 2 data, so we have to have a, a, a downloading process uh, from uh, ESA's uh, Copernicus Open Access Hub. So here we have a, 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 a workflow to do this kind of uh, data downloading because the data is downloaded uh, through network, uh, network uh, operations. So sometimes there uh, may have some errors. Uh, because of network communications, so uh, in so in the process we download the data, especially we want to do the we want this process to be fully automated. So we we need to have some uh, integrity check process to make sure all the data is verified and complete completely with no any problems, and then with those checking process, then we can. Uh, generate a sigma naught, something or, or, uh, I mean, if we want to do the data from the Senino 1 data, okay, uh, then we have to use net to com convert the original data to sigma naught, and then we can uh, ingest all of the sigma naught to data cube. Okay, this is uh, uh, the integration of Senino 2 ARD. Actually, it is more or less the same with Selino 1 uh, because it, at the very uh, at the beginning, we have to have a, a, a network processing to download the data and check the integrity of the data. And then uh, if you, the, the data download is, is the L2A data, level 2A data, then we can uh, yeah, three, directly ingest everything to uh, our data cube. And uh, the following, uh, I'll say something about the TWD data export. Uh, after we uh, integrate the sensors ARD to data cube, then we have, we have to have some ways to export data or to analyze data, then you can get your application result. So here is a, a, a very simple uh, ways to get the data from data cube we go we, we, we call that custom mosaic from custom mosaic uh, tool you can set up uh you are going to test this out. okay in our in in our next next session we, we, we will say uh this part in uh, more detail and then we'll have a practical demo okay live demo here to let you know more it, to let you know this part in more detail. And then, uh, and then, uh, okay, then the, the way we need to have a, a custom mosaic that is because for single uh, satellite images or single day satellite images, it is uh, normally it is very difficult to get a, 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 a very, I mean, a, 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 how to say that, uh, data can be just uh, suitable for your applications because sometimes they are cloud because sometimes there is no data area. So if you use a customer, then you can get you a data. Uh, it's less cloud, less crowded and uh, uh, can be covered completely in your study areas. That is the function of customer. Like in next session, our colleague will demo, demo you how to do this 
kind of job in data cube. And uh, we also can integrate, uh, I mean, to do the analysis within the Jupyter uh, uh, by Python scripting. Uh, okay, this is uh, the way we get uh, do the custom mosaic from the Jupyter uh, with Python code. And uh, the most important one, we can also uh, perform some applications in our, uh, I mean, do the applications with a TWC uh, by, uh, in our Jupiter's. For example, uh, this uh, here is a pretty right uh, detecting using Formosa set images. Okay. Are you going to talk, talk this part also? <laughs> also about the uh, different Yes. Okay, my 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 colleague my colleague will also uh, demo the, give you live demo of of, of this kind of uh, application, uh, similar applications, but but here is already uh, some application has been in our cube. Actually, that is uh, uh, to detect petty rise using Formosa set Formosa file images. Okay, so uh, the reason is. That, uh, because uh, for the uh, farm film in Taiwan usually is prepared in winter and filled with water in spring for rice planting, and uh, some farmers also uh, uh, will also uh, grow uh, grow that how to say green manure of all uh, cover crop in winter to increase the land fertility uh, in the next period of uh, rice growing period. So uh, we in, in this case we will use source data of um, by a Formosa set image in winter, okay, and, and in spring. In here we use three parameters to get us uh, to to get the the, the, the petty rice year area. One is change vector the, the value of change vector analysis, and the one is NEVI and the one is NEWI. Because we use change vector to get uh, where is the change the area, and uh, for petty rice area, uh, it should be filled with some water in the later image. And uh, if if land is prepared with a green manure, then we can use NDVI in the uh, prior image to know is there or uh, green manure. So this is the the the, the uh, detection uh, workflow. And uh, sometimes, if you don't want to use uh, uh, the process or the operation process in in Jupiter, you also can export the the, the, the original data to your uh, client computer. Then you can execute uh, your own application models in your computer. Actually, the slide here actually is a slide. I mean, the slide here shows that we use the the, the Erdas image model to to do the same thing uh, with the data exported uh, of a custom mosaic tool, and then this is uh, the, the 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 way we doing the, do the same thing within the the, the Jupyter Python. Okay, actually, uh, in our data cube, uh, maybe our my colleague will demo you similar things here. For the uh, application builder or the people who build the, the model, you just need to worry how is uh, the, the, the how is the operation of your model. Uh, in our Taiwan data cube, we will pre prepare you the the the, the, the data importing part and the, the, the result exporting part for, for you. So with the data importing part and the data exporting part, it's already there so you just need to worry uh, your 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 model there and then uh, then you can uh, uh, get the whole thing done uh, very easily and uh, this is the the cell light image here this is uh, uh, this is the winter image and this is the spring image you can see that uh, the, the in the winter uh, most of land here is bare soil and then, and some of them are, are there are some vegetation here. Then this is the so-called uh, green manure. And then in the spring image, and the most uh, you can see that uh, 
uh, more, uh, there's a lot of lands filled, filled with water. That is because this is a petty rice field and need to uh, start a new period of rice growing. And then uh, we use the change, uh, CVA, change vector analysis, analysis NDVI uh, of prior image, uh, and NDWI of later image. Then we can get uh, the, the petty rice area uh, with, by the uh, the, the, the yellow lines. Okay. Uh, and, okay. The yellow lines means that this is pain rise with gray manure. And then the, 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 the cyan lines means this is pain rise without uh, gray manure. So uh, we also can uh, publish uh, this kind of, uh, of results to public or to our government. And uh, uh, how is that uh, to come? post a map here to make a better reference for their operations. And this is uh, another thing, this is kind of uh, um, this disaster detection uh, for a heavy rain using SARS satellite. And uh, because uh, sometimes we will have uh, very heavy rains in uh, different kind of areas. So normally we can use SAR image to get the flooded areas. Because uh, if some some area is flooded, then uh, the sigma node will change dramatically, uh, and then we can use a threshold to detect where is the flooded area. Actually, this is the, the, the flow chart, working flow to detect the the, the, the flooded area. Uh, as I said, you can also you uh, if you want you can use your external uh, applications to detect the same. I mean the to do the same analysis. Okay, okay this is the, uh, the process we, we we do the same thing in uh, Jupyter Python. Okay, as I said here, uh, you can, you just need to worry the, the, I mean, the detection model here. And uh, before this detection model, we have uh, the, 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 we already built the data importer data importing a process for, for, for users. And uh, in, uh, after this part, after the, the model here, and we, all, we also have some data export part. That those, those part can, both of those part can help you to finish your jobs. And this is the two periods that uh, Sentinel-1 data. The, 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 uh, the circled area, actually, you can see that is a flooded area detected. Uh, we also can uh, produce a, a, a map of flooded area for 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 uh, as a reference uh, as a very for later jobs. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, here is uh, the end of my presentation. Presentations. So, uh, if there are any questions or you want to ask, okay, nothing like that. Chachanan, <laughs> Chachanan, uh, we finished no, no. Uh, my part. Okay. Is have no the question in the chat box? So, thank you for your presentation. And uh, now, for now, if we don't have any questions, so we we'll proceed, and probably we we'll come back again when we got a question from the chat. So thank you, Dr. Chang, for your presentation. And uh, next, we are pleased to have Mr. Wei Shuang Sheng, uh, an engineer of NSPO, to be our speaker. And Mr. Wei will present Taiwan Data Cube workshop demo. So please. Okay. Again, can you Hello, hear? everyone. Yeah. Can 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 hear my voice? Yes, clearly. Really? Okay. Okay. So so now I continue the presentation about the beta cube live demo. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, hi, I am the Shenzhen Wei from the SPO. I think before the session, have everyone have the basic know how about the data cube. So in this session, I will demo uh, the how can use the data cube by the deployment interface with the Jupyter notebook, and uh, I will prepare the three case to demo for you. So this is my outline. In this session, I will introduce how to in employment to uh, import employment data with Jupyter Notebook and uh, show you how to develop a verification analyze case in data cube with the Jupyter. I will share uh, every detail about how to export satellite image data and also demo the a uh, three application case about the uh, custom mosaic, uh, predio field surface, and the uh, Usaran wealth of the banana banana tree in Taiwan. So, but, but uh, I I introduce uh, uh sorry uh before the introduce the last thing demo I I want to talk about the what's the What's the X array? Because all of the uh, satellite image calculation in data cubes are based on the X array. The X array look like uh, the X array library look like the NumPy, but have the some difference. This is the multiple dimension calculate calculation library. Uh, the the multiple dimension I think including the x, y, and the t, also in the, the other in impending dimension. I mean the for for example in here, I I mean if the satellite image, uh, we we import the x is the longitude, y is the latitude, and the t is the time. And the impending the dimension is the uh, spatial information. In here is is uh, maybe the blue band, green band, red band, or the VEG five, VEG six, blah blah blah. So so in 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 a data cube system, we all uh, uh, based based on the X array to do some processing to analyze. So in uh, wait, waiting the uh, our application case, we are using the X array to do the analyze. So so in 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 this case, we import the Sentinel two image. So and uh, we we in, import the the. We can e we we can easier get the multiple time periods image and the, the different spatial information from the data cube, but more important, we can easier and quickly using the spatial to do the analyze. Look the uh, this picture. We can quickly get the location, focus location, and the time and the spatial information from the data cube. We select the spatial. Uh, to combine, we, we combine the spatial to output image. So in, in this image, we combine the uh, RGB band to export data. And uh, this one, we combine the uh, uh, NIR RG band to combine the both color image. So ne ne next, I will uh, explain how to use the data cube to do some image application. So uh, first, uh, first uh, I will demo uh, how to custom mosaic, create a median custom mosaic image. So uh, before the demo, I, I need to talk about the uh, customized mosaic. Here show the user interface of customized mosaic in uh, Taiwan data cube. User can specify time periods and the location, then 
Taiwan Data Cube will mosaic all of the available image by the quality index. Quality index is the cow uh, cow mask. In here example, first uh, single search result is the uh, uh, cloudy image in here. We can see the sun sun cloud in here. And the second one, single re re result is show the misses data. In here we miss the data. But if you, we we set the period search search the data cube will more them into a image with the maximum clear pixel, so we can get the new new one uh, satellite image. So we can use this uh, whole image to uh, analyze. Uh, but the, this this in example is a small area. Um, if you want to make a large area, I think it's uh, very difficult and also it's a uh, hard work. For example, if you want to take the whole Thailand area, I think it's a uh, very hard work and uh, you can spend a uh, very, very a lot of time to do the, the mosaic. So, but in the data cube system can do it. So wait, wait, waiting, I will show the how, how to mosaic the whole Thailand area. Uh, image for you. So in, in here, um, we can we can use the data cube de deployment environment. It is the, the program and the, the follow the the this uh work 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 flow chart. We, in this example, we use the Sentinel image and the time range is the, the 2020 uh, January to June. Uh, so we have the four months to do the uh, one image of the cast, uh, median custom mosaic. So follow this flow chart, uh, we, we, we can get the, the uh, uh, Thailand area mask here and the, the uh, medium mosaic image in here. And then finally, we can merge the, all of the, the mosaic image. We can get the, the all, all of the Tyrant area in here. So now we, we just uh, go into the Jupyter, Ju, Ju, uh, Jupyter notebook. Okay. Okay. In in here is the uh, Jupyter notebook environment and um, form in here. So we already uh, create uh, the project in here. The, uh, the, this is the script uh, based on the Python code. So so if you want the, to do the some project, you need by the Python code. So we open the first one. Demo the Sentinel two custom mosaic in Thailand area. Uh, I I I I think uh, coordinate is a uh, very difficult work. So, but but uh, in 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 this in in this the the project I already setting up all all of the 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 coordinate, but I I need to. Tell, uh, everyone, you you, how can you set up uh, this environment? Uh, first, uh, we we need to uh, import the the library in here. The library is uh, we we the, the the library we we are using the uh, NumPy and the X array. Uh, they are to do the. Uh, the uh, uh, array processing, and also we we need you using the Mapla library to do the draw picture in here. So in here we can uh, run this one, and the second one we need define define the mask. So in in this case we using the Sentinel two data. So or Sentinel Sentinel two ARD data have 
have already defined the, all of the mask in here. Look like the, the cloud shadow, vegetarian and the non-vegetarian and the water. So in here we can we we can define you won't use the mask in here. In the wrong. And the night 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 next block is a very very uh, important one in here we in here we need state the you need use the products so in this case we use the sentinel 2 data from the tyrant tyrant cube and uh, in and uh, we use the uh, range is uh, 2020 June, january to march i think a totally three months in here and uh, and uh, we can choice you you want to use the measurement in here we setting the blue band and the green band and the red band and the vegetarian five and vegetarian six in the nir so in here you also can change to other one maybe you want you just want to uh, explore the rgb nir i think you can delete Delete to 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 uh, spatial information in here. And the next, we 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 just uh, say stating the uh, you want more sex the area. In here, we we all we we have the set the all all Tyrant area in here, but it's a very Tyrant area is a very uh, large. So so. I, I think if I I, I run this program well um, around a long time in here, so so we we set in a small area, just the little point two degrees, and the we next one. Uh, in in here is to do uh, the in, in in this in this code is to do the uh, 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 Mid, uh, custom mosaic, median custom, median mosaic compulsion in, in here. And, and, uh, and, uh, um, in here, we, 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 we mosaic, uh, we need to uh, cut the small area to do everyone. Uh, 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 every small area we, we to do finish the mosaic. I, Finally, I, I will uh, merge the small area. So in, in here is uh, the, the, the tell you how to mosaic the image. So I run this one uh, because it's uh, uh, 0 0.2 degrees area. So just totally have the just the four for small image to do the custom mosaic. And uh, he finish, he will go in, the, the picture will save, save in the Tyrant 2020 demo, this, this folder. So I already, it already finished the one picture. And the, and the nice, and the nice part, we, in here, we will using the GDAL merge Python to, merge four small uh, picture to one so we can go into this output folder for you here so so you can see have the uh, produce the four geotip file in here And uh, now I, I can show you already the Tyrant area, uh, the GeoTIF. I, I, I using the QGIS to, to op op open the whole Tyrant area. Here. So, so we, we can see uh, here, 
because uh, in, in uh, we we using the medium mosaic the 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 tool to to how do you say? Um, is we we can find some pattern. Okay. So 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 in 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 here we we also can see the some some thin lines in here, Be, because uh the 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 mosaic the the image you have the they come come from the different set different type set type image so so have the a, a little so you also can see look like the, the, this thin line in here but uh, almost the area i think is uh, very good you can see <laughs> okay so uh, so in here do, do you have any question in here this part? for for this part if not, I, I will continue the next demo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I am okay. okay, okay. So uh the second pass demos, um and the second case demo we we will to do the predialized surface. Um I, I will use in the the lane color change and the special index about the NDVI and the NDWI to do the, the predialized detection from the Tyrant area. So so in, in, in this case we chose the nearby the barrier run area. Uh, select the uh, call free data in 2019 from the data cube system. So so uh, from the the natural color uh, Natural color image, you you also can clearly see the the change change in the peripheral field area. So you 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 can see the the green part is the the field area, and the, the harvest area is the orange part in here. So we we need using the calculate uh. Uh, to detect the the radio rise area. So this is the the NDVI result. The green part usually use usually show show us the the green plants location. The yellow part usually show us the non green plant location. We think light like the color area is changed from the green to yellow. We think the position uh, is the radio field area. And, the, and the, this is the NDWI results. The blue, the blue part usually show the water area. The yellow part uh, usually show the non-water area. So we can we we can detect the the color changed area, because uh, the 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 uh, radio rise fields, uh, the leaf have the contain the water. So so in blue part we 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 think light is the radio field area. And the, the half is the, the this is show maybe is the length. So so in here we 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 think that is the 
not non water area. So we can detect the, this change to, to detect the plagiarized area. Uh, so, so in this case, we select the, the two image. One, one is in here. One is the rice field, and the is, is, is second one is the harvest finish image. So we, we will calculate calculation the NDVI and the NDWI and the, the, the CVA index. When when three in index have the changed, I will detect the radioized area. So in this photo, it show show the results. So we can see the yellow line is the we detect the the radioized area in here. So so now I I will the day. So we we can run into to more see detail in here. So, so now I will uh, demo how to do uh, this project here. So this project is the radioized detection using the map multi time period satellite image. So first uh, we also the, the setting up the import library. We also using the X-ray NumPy and the uh, sun, sun calculation the library in here. And the uh, and the uh, to do the process before the be, before to do the processing analysis, we, we need the uh, uh, define the uh, RGB how to show the RBG, uh, RGB image in here, and uh, also define uh, uh, the cloud mask in here, and uh, also to do the mosaic image in here because we we, we don't we, we don't want the the any cloud 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 image cloud piece to uh, affect the the our result. So in here we we using the the Sentinel two data in the Thailand and the, this is the location range in here. And the, we in here we we choose the the two times data image. First time is the two thousand nineteen uh, November, and the second one is the two thousand nineteen October. So we can get we, we can get the, the two image in here. So this one this one is the later mosaic image, and this one is the the previous mosaic image. So in the main image, we also can can clearly see the land change in here. So so next we, we will using the, the two image. To do the CBA and to do the NDVI index, NDWI index, and the CBA index. So first, uh, we we to do the uh, CV, CBA CBA index. I I think this is a, a very simple idea. We 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 just uh, using the, the the previous the blue band minus the latest blue, blue band and the green band also. Green band, red band, and IR band also. You can get the, the, the CBA lens. And the, the other ones, we also need to uh, consider the, the angles, spatial angles. So, so spatial angles will uh, affect the, your result. So in, 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 in here is the, our, our uh, CBS result. The yellow part is, is, is the detect the pedial rise area in here. Ha, have changed pedial rise area in here. 
So second one, we, we need to do the NDVI uh, result. So first, uh, we, we also to do the uh, previous NDVI results in the, the, the in the uh, in the later NDVI results. So so in here we, we can see the, the yellow part is the oh blue 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 part is is the the detect the the uh, water area. Come on. In the, the later later image, we can see the result is the upside, uh, up, upside. Uh, we, we can see the predial rise area also is the the, the detect the, the water area here. And the next part we, we, we need to do the NDVI detect in days calculation in here. So we also uh, to do the NDVI, previous NDVI is the re result in here. So we, we can see the, 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 the value is one, is the uh, predial rise area in here. So, so in here, we, we, we need using the three index to, to end the the one result we can get we, we can get the the pedial rise area so so this is the combine the, the cva index and the ndwi index and the the, the ndvi index the results in here so so value is one is the 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 pedial rise area in here so this result we also can can create can create the shape file to to your your site. You can use in the uh, shape file to do some some analyze in 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 your site, and also you can you can export your team in here. Okay. Okay, so 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 this part is the radio rustication using the multi time period satellite image. <laughs> so nice part. So next part, I, I will talk about the uh, Fusarian wild of the banana tree in Taiwan. In, in this part, uh, we, we, we will use in the spatial index analyze in data cube to detect the uh, number of the banana trees. So in in banana in in, uh, in banana trees disease that uh, fusarium wilt is a uh, very serious. Uh, the the fusarium's weight which that will affect and uh, expand the scope of the disease, cause the banana trees to waste. So. We want to use the set. We, we want to use in the set line image to find disease detection model in the Taiwan case. So in this case, in this case, uh, in our research area, focus in the South Taiwan, uh, Chongnan, 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 Bang, Bang, Pindong area. So in here, in in yellow circle location, we can see the see the uh, Basarian's wilt 
of the banana trees. So this tree is already uh, died. So we 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 want using the data cube to quickly and the the uh, uh, quick, quickly and easier to analyze to to find the the uh, banana trees location. So so uh, we we can use the data cube to quickly. Obtain the multiple previous image from the data cube. Also, to do the the, the NDVI and NDWI index, the both index have changed. It's meaning the banana tree will the the weights. So, waiting, I will follow this uh, workshop to uh, workflow workflow to do the our the analyze. So in, in here we show the natural color image uh, from the 2019 to 2020 20 image in here. So from the data cube we can uh, quickly to to see the image in image. And uh, we we also using the data cube the system to get the the NDV uh, multiple image analyze. NDVI result and the NDWI result. So we can see the this, this yellow yellow circle area. We can see the, the have some different, and the, he he will the, the growing more growing. So in in, in here is the the disease the disease area. Also the NDWI. Also can can see the same situation here. So so we are uh, so we are using the one year image to do the NDVI and NDWI. So results show show us the our focus area is a, a very clear change and the, the range have the continue to grow in. So we try to draw the NDVI curve of the deceased area and the, the deceased area in the, the the health health the area. So so we can we can clear see the 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 health the location the NDVI curve fitting the growth the processing of the banana tree including the, the sending uh, middle pending stage and the heading in periods and the harvest the periods uh, the, the orange lines is the health locations so we can see the blue line is the disease the lo location. You, we can see, see, we also can see the, the seeding stage and the, the middle, mi middle paint stage, stage. But the blue line, not the handing periods. So, so in, 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 in this, in this time point is mean the, the uh, banana tree disease occurred in 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 this in this in this time. So in the NDWI, we also the, the see the same situation here. Also, the, the health location also have see the seeding stage and the middle pending stage and the heading period and the husband in here, and the, the disease disease location also we we can see the the the, the fitting the, the banana tree growing in curve so so in so now we, we just the demo how to how to do the the list position in the Jupyter notebook okay so in, in this uh the, the, the this project is the demo the Bosamian wealth of the banana tree in Taiwan Taiwan case. 
so in, in here we 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 also setting up the, the library and the and the we setting the the location range in here and also select the the you want the products in here we we we, we using the sentinel2 data and uh, here we, we we need search the data from the data cube server in here And in the in the this is the we are mapping mapping location here. We can check we 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 setting the range uh, is right or not in here. In the next part, we, we need uh, define the NDVI and uh, define the NDWI and the, the, the define the false color image and the define the natural color image. Okay, so we, we run. In the list part, we all we all to do the the we define the image include the natural color image and the post color image and the NDVI and NDWI. And uh, in here we we also the uh, the uh, define the uh, the uh, we output the the call free image percentage in here. So. So bigger than 19 coffee image, I will explore the data. So this is the wrong result. And the, in here, we will show the, the image coffee percentage in here. Okay, so so the 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 photo is the so much totally have the seventy two image in here. So I think it already done processing done. So 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 I I need the merge all of the picture and then in here I will show the result. So in 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 the Jupyter notebook environment can quickly show the the image result in here. We can the quickly to to see the the uh, NDVI result and the NDWI result. So we can from the this picture picture can quickly to know which which location is the anomaly. So in in this case we 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 can know in here. In here is maybe it's the anomaly area in here. So nice part we we need the the create the the, the curve, NDVI curve and the NDWI curve and the pixel by pixel. So we can also we can also in continue the Jupiter. So in, 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 in this part we can we can go into the Google map to choice. We we want we, we, we want calculation which piece of to uh to do the NDVI curve and the NDWI curve. So we can choose maybe we can choose this this point. So we can see just the 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 we can get the latitude and the longitude location in here, and and the, uh, we can choose we we want we, we want the time range, and uh, you want the products, and uh, we also to do the 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 index calculation about the NDVI and the NDWI.
先往跑下。And、uh, and、uh, so if if、uh, run the image, we also can get the 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 NDVI locations value in here. We can print print the data, export the data. We we can go to the data cube system outside to do the other analyze. And、uh, also we we also can in the Jupyter to to run the results. So we can see see we focus the the light light piece source area below. We can we can see light area is the health location in here. So we can see the the health curve in here. So I I think uh this is my 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 live demo. So do you have the anything uh question? Yes, we have a question from the chat box and Q and A. So sorry. Okay. Uh. So thank you very much for your presentation, and so now we have some question from the from the chat box. Uh, yeah, so the, the first question is. Okay. We, we have we have question. We have question. I I would like to Miss Pim Sun uh ask the question and your answer, please. Okay. Okay. So the first question is from uh Mr. Naravit. Uh, is this have any limitation for the processing uh very huge data and it have any cost? Okay. <laughs> Can you hear the equations? Yes, yes, but but we cannot see the 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 chat box right now. Oh, this one is the Q and A box that you see that Mr. Nalawit asks you about. It is a have any limitation for processing very huge data, and it have any cost. Okay, so uh, actually, uh, the limitation is uh, the uh, your machine's memory. Right now, we run our data cube uh, using virtual machine in uh, NCHC uh, in in a supercomputer environment, and uh, uh, right now, uh, I think the uh, the user the user system we use is. Uh, 16 core, 16 core, 128 128 gigabyte memories. So for for normal operations, we actually we don't find any problem right now. But uh, I think the real problem is that, for example, you want to model the very large area image, for example, the whole Thailand image. You have actually we cannot load the whole Thailand data. Especially 10 meters resolution data for whole Thailand data, we cannot load that large areas data. So we have to divide uh, the whole area in uh, many tiles. Okay, how right now how how large is the tile size you, you use in your uh, Thailand model? Zero point two degree. Yes. Yes. Okay. Point. Okay. Yes. So right now we divide the the whole area. Uh, we see a uh, with many tiles and uh, the the size of a tile is zero point two degrees. And 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 and, and uh, I I think I run the whole tile area totally have the uh ten thousand tiles to do processing. I think okay. I run the all uh two weeks to finish. Okay, so so you know that the major limitation here is your uh uh is your memory. 
okay, it, it, it will rain installed in your machine. For right now, we use 128 gigabytes uh, setting here. Uh, seems there's no uh, any uh, problems for our uh, running in data cube. And, uh, and, at a, uh, and I don't know, I, uh, what is what is your question about the cost? You you mean the time cost or the the the, the, the money cost? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I, I, right now I can see the chat box right now. Okay, so uh, there is a, a, a several question here. Okay, the, 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 the first question is about the, 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 how we do the, the, the cloud detection here. Uh, 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 should I ask, uh, ask the, the question one by one? Or yeah, yeah. I, I, I share okay? okay. share on this one. The next question is, um, how did you create uh, can you see the, the PowerPoint slide? How did you create the Thailand Mark image? It is it automatic or not? Okay. So okay. So so you I think you, you mean the, the, the whole Thailand image mosaic. Uh, actually that is automatic. Uh, we only set up the, the program here. actually the program is uh, to uh, get a median. Okay, median operation of uh, different days data. And then, of course, the crowded pixel is already excluded by our QI index. And then uh, uh, we collect the, 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 the image from our data cube tile by tile. And as I said, the tile, the tile size is 0 0.2 degree each. And then uh, how many tiles? You do 10,000. Oh, 10, so, so totally 10,000 tile has been done uh, by our procedures. And then uh, the last procedure is to uh, to to mosaic uh, all the tile together. Actually, like we use, actually, we only use a simple call from GDL. Uh, GDL actually is an open source library to operate. A, uh, different kind of images, including a satellite image or uh, aerial photos. We use that tool, uh, we can, uh, uh, how to say, model all of the, the, the tiles together and get the whole set image as we showed in uh, QGs. Okay. So, is yeah. that okay? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's okay. So for the next question is for the rice area in Buriram, Thailand. Have you create carry out uh, accuracy assessment metric? Thank you. Okay. So currently we are still working for that part because for the accurate assessment we need uh, uh, Nectex help to get get to give us a. Uh, 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 the, the parallelized map, and then we can calculate the, the accuracy. But uh, but uh, for the same experiment uh, carried out by NECTEC, actually they use different areas uh, data, Sentinel 2 data. Actually, I mean, uh, the same data from DataCube, uh, the accuracy can be around 70 to 80 percent. So uh, uh, and uh, currently, this is a very preliminary uh, analysis here. Right now, we are still working on different kind of method, and hope we can increase the accuracy. Uh, can you see the chat box? Did you see the the okay. question from uh, Doctor? Happy what? Yeah, First yeah, Apiwat, Apiwat from Nectech. Okay, okay, so so I answer the, this, the question in chat box one by one, okay? <laughs> okay, okay, so maybe I answer the first one, the, 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 the question from uh, Apiwat. 
And then that, this, this question is about how we can detect the crowd area from satellite images. And uh, uh, why we use, uh, okay, and, and, uh, for this question, uh, and in this question, we use uh, k mean, as he said here. Uh, understand here, uh, we use k mean clustering uh, to uh, as a uh, uh, pre processing class classification. Actually, we just use k mean here to get the, 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 the value of the crowd. And then we will use uh, the, the result of k mean uh, to set up threshold, uh, a kind of threshold for our segmentation result. Actually, we uh, a segmentation process is followed to, to segment the whole set of images to get uh, where is crop patch and where is the land object patches. And then because we have came in and then we use the highest value classes of came in and regarded is a, a, a crowd threshold. And the, the threshold should be also uh, higher enough because we have another threshold to say that uh, is that uh, is that uh, is the the highest value of uh, this image is uh, uh, is good enough to be a crowd uh, values. So we use that kind of value as threshold uh, to fill out all the segment. All the uh, small patch, or all, all, all the segment to see which segment, which segment is a crowd segment, something like that. Okay. And then, okay. I think it's okay. For the okay. next. And, okay. Okay. Uh, so. Oh, so, so in the chat box is is these two questions. One is for crowd detection, and another is the assessment uh, result of our rush detection. I think we we answer the both of these questions. Uh, can you see the Q and A box? Uh, did we have a new question from? Uh, uh, Kun Visalini, okay. Vila, Vila okay. she asked about can this program yes, separate the NDVI of each plant and identify the almost of that plant? NDVI. So, so this question is not showed in the chat box, right? This is is the Q and A box. So I will show you. Oh, on... Q and A box. Oh, okay, Q and A box. Can you see the okay. Q and A box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Q and A box. Very, yes. Uh, very small. The question let from me, the. Me, okay. Why yeah. do? Okay, okay. 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 Can this program separate NDVI of each plan and identify among the that plan? Okay. Okay. Uh, I think normally, uh, for if you have uh, uh, how to say that, mm -hmm. if you have multi temporal data, it is possible because for multi temporal for multi temporal cell image, we can know uh, the variation of NDVI temporal variation of NDVI for each pixels. So I think different kind of props or different kind of plants. The temporal variation of NDVI should be different because of the planning date or the growing stage of the, 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 the your ground objects should be different for different kind of props. So if you can get samples of NDVI variation variation of different crops or plant, then maybe you can use this kind of training samples data to. Uh, detect uh, the unknown pixels. Actually, that is a variation of unknown pixels, NDVI variation of unknown pixels. Then I think uh, it should be possible to get you the, the, the locations of your of different crops of different planets. Then you can identify the amount of different crops. Okay. 
This is my answer for the second uh, questions in Q and A. Okay. Okay. Everyone can hear me. If you, uh, Dr. Napadon, just suggest if you don't understand in uh, some kind of the technical subtitle or something, he will translate in Thai. That is okay for you. Translate in Thai. Yes. <laughs> uh, let me let me uh introduce. Um, I'm like yes, uh, Doctor Dopodon just translate a bit in Thai for clearly your answer. <laughs> โอเคเฮ้ยอ่านพอดอนนะครับนพดลจากเน็คเทคนะครับก็ผู้ฟังทางบ้านน่าจะได้ยินนะครับอ่าคําถามส่วนใหญ่เมื่อกี้เนี่
<laughs> Afternoon, can you hear us? Hello. Okay. Good afternoon. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, if we are all ready, so may I start the afternoon section? Okay, no problem. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome you all to the afternoon section of Taiwan Data Q workshop and from the morning section we learn that uh, what is the data queue and how to use it so for this afternoon section we will learn more in data queue applications and dr oh sorry uh, miss cynthia liu um, the division of director of nspo will present this for us so please miss cynthia Okay, so uh, please turn down the share icon for us. We need to turn down the... Uh, the presentations? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. 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 So uh, we need to share our PowerPoint file. So uh, to share it now, uh, I support that okay, it's okay, already okay. 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 Okay, we already see your slide. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, so okay, okay. In this part, I'm going to uh, share uh, the application of Taiwan Data Cube. Okay, uh, because uh, our uh, uh, group leader uh, Liu Xiaoqin, who uh, who is not here, and uh, uh, please allow me to uh, present this part for 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 her. And uh, actually this part is prepared by me, uh, Li Yu Chang and uh, uh, Xin Xia Liu. Okay. Uh, we prepare this part together. So please allow me to present this part. Okay. So uh, the, according to uh, the uh, application, uh, we have developed that. So uh, here uh, in this part, I'm going to say, uh, uh, Divide into this part into four, four sections. And uh, for the first section, we are going to uh, discuss something about water uh, resource uh, con uh, conservation parameters, uh, which is uh, total suspension matter monitoring. Okay. And the second part is uh, wildfire detection, uh, which use uh, sentinel data to detect uh, wildfire for Paraguay. And then uh, is uh, uh, actually is a more advanced uh, rice detection uh, method by using AI technology. And the last session we will uh, uh, go more detail in uh, the uh, Fasaria wild of banana, which is a disease kind of disease of banana. Uh, actually, we uh, have mentioned in this morning by a live demo. And then maybe we will talk uh, more detail in our uh, uh, application part uh, right now. So uh, for the first section is about water total suspension matter monitoring. And uh, 
the objective why we need to do this because uh, uh, because the accessibility of sampling size, spatial distribution, or labor cost uh, about the in situ data collection. Um, so normally, if you, we can use remote sending data to collect this kind of parameter, then we can save a lot of time and uh, and uh, and the cost. So uh, in here, we use uh, Taiwan Data Cubes data uh, to monitoring uh, one of. Uh, one of the very important reservoir in Taiwan, Zhengwen Sui Ku. And then we use uh, our data cube to retrieve water parameters. Parameters, uh, for example, the TSM, total, susp total suspension matters, and see uh, what kind of uh, help we can do by uh, doing these jobs. And then this is the uh, basic workflow of uh, this part. Uh, the first, we will collect uh, satellite images, for example, Formosis, Formosis uh, 5 or Semina 2 data, and get all of them into the uh, data cube. And then uh, we will use uh, the sampling field survey or field collected the sampling data of TSM, total suspension method from EPA. The EPA here is the Taiwan EPA Environmental Protection Administration, and and our EPA will uh, uh, doing a, a field in in, in uh, investigation to do uh, TSM retrieval, uh, maybe uh, once to uh, one once uh, two is a period within two months. So that means that we can have. Uh, uh, sampling data uh, in two months period. Okay, so uh, once we have the field data and we have uh, satellite data, we can do some correlation analysis and uh, uh, set up a TSM model to retrieve TSM values from a satellite images. And then uh, uh, eventually we will uh, uh, obtain the TSM and then we will ingest the TSM uh, back into their cube again, and regard this is kind of decision ready data, because uh, for original satellite data, maybe uh, it is already uh, NS ready, but it st still is kind of satellite data. But once uh, we put all the data into the uh, TSM model and get TSM value, this is kind of decision ready data because we can use. Uh, the TSM, TSM value to do uh, real uh, decision and uh, improve uh, the thing we need to do. And uh, then uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the figure in the right part, you can see that uh, the point here uh, means the, the, the field sampling data collected by EPA. You, you can see that the, uh, actually it is a very sparse point then maybe you cannot get very detailed information of TSM only for uh, this point sample. So if we can use a, a, a TSM model to uh, TSM modeling to uh, get a, a, a 2D uh, TSM value, then it can be helped a lot. So uh, here is the field data acquired by Taiwan EPA. Uh, Actually, uh, for Taiwan EPA, they collect a different kind of uh, water parameters. T TSM, total sus suspension measures, is only uh, one parameter within, uh, but it's only one parameter uh, within all data they collected. Okay, so so there, there this is the distribution of the uh, similar data. Uh, it should be maybe, Six point, okay. Only six points data uh, for one period data corrections. Okay, so if we can use satellite image to get uh, every image is TSM data, then it can be helped. So in here we uh, use uh, one year's whole year's data, 2019's data to do this kind of uh, testing. So here is uh, the images uh, for. And maybe I can say that the clear images for the 2019 whole year's data. And then 
uh, at the very beginning, we have to do some correlation or regression analysis uh, from uh, from the uh, uh, paper here. Okay, okay, from the literature, we can know that uh, here is the references. Okay, reference. We can know that uh, if we want to get TSM uh, values, we we can uh, set up a TSM index from the cell image itself. And uh, then we can have a uh, 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 logarithm uh, uh, models can uh, correlate TSM value with this TM, TSM indexes. Okay. 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 Actually, here, okay, maybe we, we, we uh, uh, tell that in next slide. So here is uh, here is the the, the 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 samples in different period of times. For example, in 2019, October 1st, we have six samples. Okay. Uh, so uh, within the total samples data here, then we can set up our uh, logarithm models to correlate uh, all of the connect TFN index to TSM values. So here, actually, this, this is the uh, function, the logarithm function to correlate the TSM index, which is X here, and the TSM value Y okay, here. And then uh, by using the, the, the field data and the, the corresponding uh, pixel values, or no, not the pixel value, the TSM index uh, opted from the set line images, we can have the relation here to to, to connect the TSM index X to TSM value Y. So, um, and then we can, uh, from the equation here, we can get, uh, um, I'll say the TSM value, the, the TSM value from our cell images. Then uh, we will uh, reserve some uh, check data to check how well is uh, this model. And then this is the check the result. And then if it's the horizontal axis is the, uh, the predicted TSM value and the vertical axis is the actual TSM value. And then you can see that there is, uh, 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 I mean, the consistency is there. And then we have the R square and RSM and IMSE. So, so for, for here, okay, we can know that the RMC is around two, a milligram per liter. And this is a, a check of another period, right? Okay, this this is the check for the Formosa images, and this is the check for Sentinel-2 images. We separate them two uh, into different check and see if we can get uh, a consistent result. And you can see that from the R squares and the RSA of two, uh, Data uh, retrieval. You can see that the R square, the R square, both R square and R IMC are uh, more or less the same for two sensor data. So, so we, we think that this, this this model here can be trusted, trusted and uh, applied to uh, all the data. So here is the results for uh, <clears throat> for we apply uh, that model with the right tool. Uh, uh, to every day's data and get a TSM value corresponding to each day's. And uh, from here, you can see that, okay, uh, uh, there are seasonal changes. For example, in winter time, the, 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 the TSM is higher, means that uh, the water is, uh, is dirtier, it's more dirty than uh, the other seasons, especially for uh, summertime to 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 summer times because uh, the the water is is, is especially here that may be the the raining season in time in Taiwan is around a uh, summer seasons so so because of there are more waters so the, the water seems that are more uh, clearer so and uh, and the one thing is that. This may be the most information we can tell from uh, this bunch of uh, results. Even that there are many images, 
uh, maybe we cannot go very detail for each location's variations. From here, we can only see there are seasonal changes. So uh, we we do uh, so actually we we more we make a more advanced uh, procedures. We put all of these data back into a data cube, and then use data cube function to check. Uh, the variations, or especially the TSM variation for each locations. So, so here, so uh, actually in our web UI system, the user can click at any any one position he wants within the reservoir, and then the variation of the uh, the variation in different times, different period of times will be shown in the, in the. Uh, Web UI, and then he can check uh, which temporal time is is corresponding to the highest T T F T S M values, and then uh, this this may be a very impo important uh, information to operate this uh, reservoir. Especially, you can see that uh, this is a very interesting uh, comparison. Is that uh, the the blue curve here? It means the water levels. And you can see that when water level is lower, the TSM is uh, is higher. That means that the lower the water level, the higher the uh, the, the more dirty the waters. Maybe this is the, the, the very basic mechanism here. But I think there's much more uh, or much more complex mechanism is 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 there. So. Uh, that can only be interpreted, interpreted by uh, the, the operator of the reservoir. So in here, we can provide this kind of machines for them as a reference. This is an example. Uh, actually, the, the shows uh, this example shows that uh, the user can click in different location of the, the reservoir. And then you can see that the, 30, the most dirty period is different. In different locations, so uh, this is what I said. So that uh, this information can be a very crucial uh, data for the people who operate this uh, reservoir. Okay, so uh, this is uh, a, a very short uh, session summary about our T uh, TSM retrieval use remote sensing data with Data Cube. So due to the limited and scattered ground survey data, water monitoring. Uh, can be improved by uh, the retrieval, the TSM retrieval, uh, the TSM retrieval from remote sensing data. And uh, according to our TSM model and uh, corresponding validations, the upturn re result from the regression process is uh, uh, applicable for the quality, water quality management of our Zengwen reservoir. And uh, uh, <clears throat> By applying our TSM model and the, the analysis ready data, the retrieval the, the data can be uh, put into our data cube and uh, support the, the, our uh, decision to, and that can be used as decision ready data for decision, decision support. And uh, uh, the last thing is that we that. DRD can be interactive uh, and uh, an interactive tool can be provided by RDG to have uh, a more uh, useful uh, observation of TSM variation. Okay, so this is a, a section summary of my uh, first sections. Okay, the second one is a wildfire detection in Paraguay. Actually, this is a, a, a cooperated uh, operation with uh, Paraguay Space Agency, because in the past, uh, okay, in uh, Paraguay is here. This, this is here. Actually, in this part, uh, especially in the end of summers, end of summers, mm -hmm. there the, the the weather is very dry and uh, very easy uh, to have a uh, uh, wildfire. And uh, normally, uh, uh, in the past, uh, the Paraguay Special Agency uh, normally uh, cooperated with uh, disaster charters, and the disaster charters will, will, will provide them the satellite images to observe the, the distribution of the wildfire. But there is 
but for the support of, of disaster charities, it's only one shot information. So, so in here, uh, after um, uh, discussion of both sides, we see that the five days period, the Sentinel two data data actually can provide uh, temporal variation of the wild file the distributions. That means that maybe uh, if we can use this this data properly, maybe we can know the the variation and the the the, the spread of the wild file in very quick of, uh, in very short period of times. So uh, we set up a, a, a decision a workflow for them to do this kind of jobs. Normally, uh, the major process should be almost the same. That means that we have to collect data to the data queue and then uh, uh, set up a multi-temporal data uh, analysis uh, process. Uh, normally, that including different kind of spectral index uh, calculation, and then um, eventually we can, uh, according to the upturn, the, the uh, spectral index variation to distinguish where is uh, wild filed areas. So, okay, here is the spectral index measure we use. And here is uh, the ND, the NDVI and NDWI. So NDVI, you can see that uh, where is the vegeta ve vegetation area destroyed. And the NDVI, you can monitor the, the, the deep water content changes. Especially for the, the 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 burned area, the deep water deep uh, the deep water content will become very very low. So we can integrate those index and then come out uh, some uh, so called MBR index normalized burning ratios. Uh, normalized burning ratios, you can know uh, where where is uh, the area and where is not is the area still not burned and uh, from a, a temporal analysis result you can see that uh, for the burned area especially for the Paraguay it can be recovered uh, in very also in very short period of times so uh, actually we the major, the, 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 I mean, the filed season may be, and the demands of the filed uh, cases may be around August, right? Mm -hmm. August to September. But in the uh, October to December, the vegetation can uh, be recovered, almost uh, recovered. Uh, after uh, before December, so you can see the the, 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 the variation period of the uh, wildfire case in, in these areas. So uh, and uh, according to and the MBR values, we can um, uh, classify the the, the burning classify the MBR uh, values and get uh, a burning severe severity classification here. And from here, you can see that uh, uh, some some area actually is, uh, uh, I mean, suffered from a very serious uh, wildfire attack. So uh, in this case, that maybe in uh, from the image of November and December, you can see that uh, maybe it is recovered, but. But I think that uh, the, <clears throat> maybe maybe it is not uh, totally recovered. Just like uh, I mean, the, the before the uh, wildfire, the, uh, maybe from the satellite image itself, uh, uh, from NDVI value, you can see that there is vegetation there. But but I think that uh, uh, the, the healthy condition may be not the, the same as before. So. This this may be uh, the, the the I mean the the future work we can uh, we can do okay and uh, uh, because we already have the, the burning severity then we can know uh, the, the the areas the burn areas actually in different period of times so we can calculate the burn the, the percentage of the burn area 
in the after the wildfire, we can calculate the, the recovery rate of the uh, of the, these cases. This case, so uh, burned area statistics can also be provided uh, according to our analysis. Okay, so the value here is the, the, in, in in here in here before the uh, actually this is the, the most severe period of the wildfire. So before uh, this time point, we can calculate the, the percentage of burn area. And uh, uh, after this time point, we can calculate the recovery rate of the, uh, um, this case. Okay. So uh, the more important one, we can uh, uh, do more study in the uh, temporal variation of uh, burn area. Uh, Temporal variation of indexes in burn areas because you can see that okay the the, the red dash line here uh, is the the date to uh, have have, uh, have burning situations but you can but but you can see another thing other things is that before actually the burned I mean the burned event happened if uh, all the values. NEBI, NEWI, or an MDI, the value is gradually uh, going down uh, before the burned event. That means that that is because of the weather situations. After we discuss uh, with uh, the Paraguay side, uh, we find that the weather here actually is getting drier and drier uh, when 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 the days the data is approaching to August, so in this in this case you can see that all not only NEBI but NDWI and MDI, the value is uh, is gradually going down. That means that the the leaf water content is is uh, is drier and drier, something like that. So that is also the the reason that can trigger the the. the the file case to happen. So, uh, so here we can use when we uh, observe this kind of variations, we can use the variation of the, the, the data here to set up some threshold and use this kind of threshold as uh, warning mechanism. And uh, because it, that means that once we find some areas, the index is gradually going down, like. The case of this, then maybe we can send some a warning uh, message to local people and say that okay, uh, the wildfire uh, maybe happened. Uh, some measurement should be some uh, uh, responding measure should be should be should be take something like that. So um, kind of a warning mechanism can can be set up according the the observation here. Okay, so. This is uh, the session summary of this part, and uh, according to according to uh, our uh, body temporal sending data to obtain uh, NDBI, NDWI, and NDI or NBR, the affected area can of wildfire can be uh, detected, and uh, uh, according to the temporal variations or temporal vari temporal observation of our remote sensing data. Uh, the corresponding recovery ratio can be obtained and uh, provide a reference for local government. And uh, uh, according to our temporal variation of indexes of burned area, better warning mechanism may be set up to uh, <clears throat> to, uh, to to set up as a response or early warning uh, measurement for this kind of uh, disasters. Okay, this is the uh, second session about wildfire. And then uh, the third session is the, the rust detection with AI technology. Uh, in this case is the uh, uh, rice, petty rust detection using uh, SAR images. Okay, so, uh, because petty rice is very uh, important uh, for uh, all stable crop for uh, world population, 
and uh, the year statistic, year the year the statistic of pedrivirus, the division of pedrivirus is crucial. So normally, a set of more sending data can be applied frequently for pedrivirus detection, and uh, normally. Optical satellite is the first consideration to detect uh, PDRs, but uh, that is because uh, for optical data, the difficulty is, is lower because it is the same as your visual, uh, I mean, visual result. So uh, the difficulty to detect PDRs from optical satellite data is easier. But as you know, satellite data is highly affected by uh, weather conditions. Okay. And uh, for sound data, normally that is difficult because the response is not as you are major effect. So uh, normally you need to, uh, you have to have, you have to spend more time in, uh, in the analysis or to understand the, the mechanism of the SAR data. So, but however, SAR data cannot or, or, or will be affected by weather conditions. Okay, so so the, the data supply should be more consistent than optical data. So this is why we do uh, petty resonance using uh, SAR satellite data. Okay, and for SAR data, <clears throat> Uh, the, the major uh, mechanism with SAR data, is, uh, I mean, the major interaction of the ground object and the SAR data is uh, the roughness of the uh, <clears throat> ground object. So when the petty rise or the, the, the rise is growing, the roughness is increasing. That can also increase the, the SAR backscatters uh, energies. So uh, in, in this example, this is a, a, a triple crop, uh, a triple crop uh, response of star data. So you can see that the best getter has the same period variations. So, so in here, we use a, a so-called uh, gated recurred unit, GRUAI model. Uh, in by uh, actually this model is more or less of more or less, more or less the same as neural network neural network models. Uh, because uh, for for neural network models, neural network models, there's a, is, is also a multi layers uh, uh, recognitions. Uh, how to say that? Uh, multi layer recognition mechanism all over there. So uh, within this kind of mechanism, that we can train uh, <clears throat> the weight of the, the, the node over there, and then uh, make this kind of uh, network can be used to distinguish uh, rice areas. And especially is that we put the input data here is uh, multi-temporal data. For example, here is a Centennial one images of different period times. So for each pixels, no, for each, for the same spatial locations, all the temporal pixels will be put into uh, this uh, GIU model or the neural networks. And uh, to analyze uh, the, the, the variation of uh, <clears throat> Uh, star images, temporal information, uh, temporal variation of star image, and uh, eventually we can distinguish it, uh, if that is uh, petty rise or not. So the two, uh, the basically there are two steps. The first step is the training stage. We know we use uh, we use the the, the known uh, petty rise pixels to train the weight of the GIU models. And then uh, when we get, uh, uh, I mean, maybe not perfect, but, but, uh, but can be used uh, training GIU networks, then we can uh, put all of the uh, 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 left pixels to, to, to see uh, which one is pretty right or not. Then we can get the final result. 
Okay, so in here, uh, the example here, we use 11 periods of data to do uh, uh, <clears throat> to test the model here. And then this is the, the, the image we use. And actually, we can actually from your, from visually, you can see uh, the rise characteristic into uh, in the, the star data because in the uh, uh, in the beginning stages you, you know that for the petty right field the, the water should be flooded with uh, into the, the, the field so you can see that the black area is the flooded field okay uh, filled with waters and uh, you can see that after one or two months is uh, the 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 crop or the petty rice is uh, into is getting to the, uh, the the next growing stages. So the roughness is, is uh, increasing, is increasing and increasing. So you can see the best scatter here is higher and higher. And maybe the highest period is in uh, June, okay, in June, and then uh, in in July. Uh, the, 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 the petty rice is harvested, so it uh, the the scatter because the, up, the land object is is getting uh, smoother. So so uh, the best scatter is lower here. So this is actually is a, a complete period of rice growing. So uh, here we use uh, uh, or we start to build our GRS, GRU model in Jupiter, and then we start to. Uh, 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 establish the training stages and get the, the, the train the networks. And then this is the, the processing uh, procedures. So this is the result. And uh, the, in the left panel here, in left panel here is the detected result of GIU models. And the, all, the, all the part is circled by uh, red, a thin red line here. So you can see that most of, and the right part here is uh, the, the ground truth of the petty rice areas. And, uh, and you can see that there is a small, uh, very small patches here. Actually, this is the commission area of these models. And uh, they are also very small. So normally we can use uh, GIS techniques, for example, the morphology process to get rid of get rid of these small patches and then you can uh, get even higher accuracy of the result actually this is the re uh, uh, final result of uh, these models and uh, you can see that overall accuracy is rather high but because there are commission errors you so you can see that the, the user accuracy is not that here and uh, that not it's not that high there okay so so but this is uh but i think that uh because there is a many a small patch over there so i think that if we apply a morphology approach to get rid of those small patch areas the user accuracy can be even higher so this is uh, a, a very short section summary by using the ai uh, ai model here and uh, uh and uh, cooperate with our data uh, cube uh, data cube uh, operations and uh, we can save a large of time in downloading and the preprocessing data and get a uh, result uh, very quick so uh, uh, currently our GIU model uh, our trained GIU model can achieve accuracy more than 90 percent but I think that uh, there is still procedure need to do in the next uh, to uh, further improve uh, the accuracy because we can see that the over maybe the overall is ninety percent, but for the user accuracy, it may be only uh, seventy percent. So that is what I mean that uh, maybe there is uh, uh, some other method should be taken. Uh, just follow the GRU model to uh, get more improvement, improve the result. So this is a section summary of this part. Uh, the, 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 next, the, the last part is uh, 
Vasari Aguyo of banana in Colombia. This is a kind of disease, disease of banana trees. And this kind and this, this disease, yeah, especially can be spread in very short of time and, and affect the banana in large areas. So this is a, a, a very important uh, <clears throat> Uh, point we, we, we can use cell image to monitor. And uh, this is a case in, in Colombia because, it, uh, as we know, that banana is uh, the, the main major food of supply in Central and uh, South America. So, so this is a, a very important uh, <clears throat> vegetation uh, in those areas. And uh, for this kind of disease, for sorry, wilt actually uh, it's never affect this area uh, before 2019. So in in June 2019, this is the uh, for sorry, wilt is the first uh, is the first found in this area. So because this kind of disease it can be spread in very short of time. So so they they notice that this is a very important issues. So, so the process is like that. Uh, the infected area, they find this kind of disease in June, and then two months later, uh, then they uh, finish the process of, uh, I mean, corresponding to this, this, this disease. You can see that some land is burned, and uh, most of tr banana trees around uh, the disease area is removed to prevent further infections. And, uh, but uh, from our satellite, so according to this case, case we collected uh, around uh, half a year's data here. And then we can, and this is the, the, the uh, water index, NMDM uh, spectral indexes. And we can see that in June, the find the uh, uh, disease and the start to remove the, the trees around the, 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 the point, uh, the disease point, disease the point. You can see that the, the, maybe they, they took, they took uh, two months to, to remove the, the, the surrounding trees. But according to our cell, according to our observations, the affected Point on the affected areas uh, has a suspicious drop of deep water content uh, in May. So that means that if we use satellite images, uh, <clears throat> the diseased uh, areas can be maybe found one month before. Actually, this is very important. So uh, uh, this, uh, actually, we can do the same thing as we. We have done before. Uh, uh, you can see that the NEVI variations or uh, EVI or NTWI variation in different times. So you can see that, okay, uh, the index actually is slightly uh, decreased before uh, they uh, really find the disease location. The, the quick drop here. Actually, is 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 because they remove the trees. But you can see that maybe one or two months, one month before the 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 the, the index has a, a very suspicious changes out there. So maybe we can use this kind of information as a warning mechanism to uh, make uh, the farmer there uh, to to be a more to be more caution caution of uh, the the of their field. So here, actually, we have a, 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 a working project that was uh, uh, our uh, ICDF International Cooperation uh, Foundation uh, Department, uh, ICDF Foundations. And then we have this kind of project to, uh, to, to see that if we have some kind of method that can Get this kind of disease information earlier than from investigations. So uh, we have uh, so we we start up a um, one year's uh, project here. South uh, actually uh, okay. Then then 
right now the execution unit is international cooperation developed from, from the foundation ICDF and the Taiwan Banana Research Institute and us at SPO to, uh, to try to carry out some information uh, as a uh, 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 warning mechanism to, to say that, uh, to see that if we can find uh, the disease the point earlier. Okay, actually we have some working items for them. For the first is, is the collection and analysis of historic for historical uh, events. And then we collect the satellite data, and then we start to uh, collect or to uh, obtain the analysis ready data for the uh, study areas. And then we will uh, set up some models or uh, develop, develop uh, we can set up some model to find uh, and, and, and see if we could detect this kind of event. So uh, this is, uh, Actually, this is an ongoing project. So here is uh, just the section summary of this part. Uh, so due, due to this kind of disease can be spread in very quick, short times. So uh, if, we, uh, if we can detect this kind of event earlier, then we can, uh, uh, we can have uh, less economic loss in this kind of event. So uh, <clears throat> according to our preliminary study, uh, the spectral change, spectral index change can uh, more or less respond to uh, <clears throat> this kind of disease. So uh, we will do more study about this part uh, to see we can if we can set up a model to, to doing this kind of uh, uh, periodically. And then uh, Right now, current field data and his historical remote sensing data, data cube are in, is, uh, is already integrated. So uh, right now, uh, some model is uh, uh, still uh, is under. Uh, right, right now, we, we, we are trying to uh, develop some models to identify this kind of situation. So uh, <clears throat> of course, once the application model is accomplished, we can identify the affected location earlier and have more control for spread of disease. Okay, so uh, so here is the, uh, the conclusion and the suggestions. So, okay, so after we have the four uh, uh, cases over there, so uh, if we have, uh, 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 it is well known that body temporal and uh, uh, Modern temporal data can provide more information for target identification. But as you know, the aggregation and the normalization of multi temporal data is not that easy. And uh, normally it's a drawback for general users. So in data cube, we can uh, cope with these kind of situations. Multi temporal and spatial remote sensing data can be well integrated and provided. And uh, by using the standard of NS ready data, all the data is normalized. The user can get rid of tedious data preprocessing and uh, only focus on the algorithm developing. So in our TWC, several applications has been built and proved that it is a feasible, feasible uh, uh, solutions. So the data model and the algorithm uh, uh, eventually, uh, or we hope that can provide us an example for needed user and a shorten the living curve in the future for uh, the users who are interested in data key. Okay, so this is the end of my talk. Uh, is there any questions? Okay. Okay. So, um, thank you, Dr. Shang, for your informative presentation. And for the audience, if you have any question, please send to the Q&A chat box and our speaker will answer that later. So now we may proceed to the last presentation today. Oh, okay. Sure. So we have question from Dr. Can I ask some questions? No problem. 
Okay. For your banana, uh, I know how to pronounce that name, but can can it detect some pests and disease uh, in some wild area of different crops? I'm not sure. Could it be, could it be like sugarcane, pests and disease, something like that? Would it be applicable? Okay. Because uh, as you know, right now, actually we are not directly detect the disease because the banana for the for the case of banana wilt, uh, uh, actually that is a kind of a bacteria to stop the water transmission between the, the steam. So it will, because of lack of water, so the, the leaf will become to wilt. And then, so so actually we are detecting the, the, the water content of leaf. So, uh, so not only the, the, the spectral index, the, the spreading situation is also a kind of information we will use. Because, because when we discuss with the, 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 the farmers or the, the, the researchers in, uh, in Banana Research Institute, they say that the, 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 the spread patterns, sometimes that is spread by point or spread by areas that we represent this different kind of disease. So currently we are focused on the, focusing to the point spreading situations that can be banana weird. Some kind of, or the, 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 I mean, the dramatic uh, weather temperature changes can also cause diseases. So, but that kind of disease can be uh, area spread by, I mean, an area types spreading, not only point type spread, spreading. So, 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 so normally we have to, uh, okay, in conclusion, we have to dis discuss it with, with the, the, I mean, uh, the, agricultural specialist because they tell us the, 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 the symptom and the, the, the behavior of spreading, then we can use our uh, cell line image to, to, to do uh, corresponding detections. And that is what I what we are doing right now because we are right now we are doing banana wheel. That is kind of point source uh, spreading behaviors. So so I don't know, uh, actually, I don't know if this kind of method can be applied to sugar cane or some, some different kind of vegetations, because they actually have to discuss with the, the specialist. Okay, then, then you can know if your method can be suitable to their applications, something like that. I got the idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for the question and also the answer and now we have also have another question from the audience, audience. Uh, can you see the chat the q and a chat box okay and a q and a and yes there is a question can you explain the rules to get uh, appropriate of the layer and of the hidden node uh, yeah, okay. Any limitation? Um, sorry, I don't see the Q&A box. <laughs> uh, okay, so should I repeat the question again? Do you mean that have any limitation for processing very huge? Oh, no, no, not this one. This is morning. The news, the news uh, one is um from Mr. Shayasit. It's okay. I, I will I will read the question. Uh can you explain oh a, a moment please? Explain. We we will share the question now. A moment please. Okay, so, so please share the questions. Oh, no. Can you explain the rule to get appropriate? Okay, can, can you see system? the screen now? The question <laughs> yeah, there. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You mean the explain the rule to get appropriate number of layer or the hidden node? 
Okay, that is actually that is uh, the GRU. The problem about GRU, 你知道吗？你会讲吗？那个GRU里面layer的设设定。Okay, so okay, okay, okay. So this part is uh, especially related to, to the uh, the GRU model uh, setting. Actually, especially the internal setting. So uh, I have to say that the GRU model is not is established by myself. We just use that. Uh, I mean, the the set set up the, uh, solutions. So. Uh, currently, we don't try to change the number of layer and the number of hidden node here. So uh, maybe we can uh, uh, maybe maybe later uh, when 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 I talk with the people, the person who set up these uh, models, then I can uh, answer these questions. Another one. Would you mind to describe in detail how to create ground truth data, boundary object class? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know which kind of, uh, because there are four applications. I don't know uh, what exactly, uh, which application you mentioned. Uh, ground truth boundary classes, boundary object class. Which one? Uh, yes, I have. Can this program say it's a one? Uh, can you tell me which which kind of uh, application you are mentioning for the 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 ground truth data? From the G. GRU section. Oh, GRU. Okay, okay. For the GRU sections, for the GRU section, actually that is petty rice. Actually, for Taiwan uh, agricultural, uh, okay. For Taiwan agricultural council, uh, they will carry out a uh, uh, rice a petty rice investigations twice a year. So we actually uh, we have the, the ground truth data uh, according to uh, area photo investigation or interpretations. So uh, they will do this because most of area in Taiwan uh, they grow two period rice. So uh, we have uh, so they do this kind of inve investigation twice a year. So uh, so but. Uh, as you know, this kind of information can be cannot be obtained uh, uh, very soon. Normally, uh, this kind of information can be delivered uh, uh, half years later. So normally, so so currently we are doing data uh, in the past. In the past, okay. So, uh, so I suppose no more question from the audience. So thank you very much for your answer and also the question from every participation. And now will be the last presentation uh, of Dr. Nopadon, a principal researcher from NECTEC to present uh, Taiwan Data Cube applications in Thailand. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me. And, and thank you, David, for your interest introduction to interesting application on DataCube. Okay, we've learned a lot. Okay, by working with you, and we can see the potential of using the DataCube to develop many application that is very useful. Okay, for for Taiwan and probably applicable to, to Thailand as well. Um, for us, let's, let me uh, share some work that has been done during the past six months since this project starting six months ago. And we try to um, 
make use of the data cube that provided by by NALABS, okay, TWU, TWDC, Taiwan Data Cube. And we can show you some example here. Keep, please keep in mind for the audience that this is just the preliminary result, okay? We can make it much, much more better once we get more familiar and more comfortable and probably got better idea, okay? how much we can do. So let me share my slide and I will try to follow this agenda, okay? So that we will have to finish in time. Uh, just some short slide that we want to say that thank you for TWDC for us and our version of Thailand data cube that we built here at NECTEC. Next is the chain vector analysis for uh, pretty few detection in Thailand, and we have some cloud tools data so that we can have some uh, accuracy assessment. Okay, and next I will ask my assistant here, who's sitting next to me, okay, Kun Bongalet, to show you uh, the Jupyter notebook version, okay, so that we can feel that this is the do it yourself geospatial data analysis, all right? And we come back to me again to do some chain vector CVA on the sugar cane view detection. And of course, at last I show you the traditional way of people who've been in the remote sensing area for some time. They're using this approach to detect uh, many, many clubs. And it's quite useful too, okay? We some how uh, instead of learning the new technology, we have to keep in mind what is the best practice, okay? And build something upon that point. Uh, David already showed this slide, okay? This is the Taiwan Data Cube that uh, dedicate to us as the research collaborative collaboration project, okay? Um, it's quite a powerful computer. There are three separate servers here, the one for downloading data and quite a lot of data. Uh, David already ingest the Sentinel-2 data for the whole country over, over one year, almost two years now in that system. And there's a, a private data cube for analysis. Okay, we can use Jupyter Notebook to access this and run uh, big analysis that require lots of uh, machine memory here. Okay, all run in Taiwan. Okay, thank you so much. We hope to uh, replicate this kind of thing, this powerful configuration with our uh, HPC, NASDAQ HPC probably end of this year or, or next year. In the meantime, the configuration that we built so that we can learn not only as a user, but as the administrator, we know how to extend and deploy uh, our work in here. Um, we have nine machines here, okay? One for remote sensing for downloading and seven slaves. Okay, as the workers for analysis tasks, okay, we don't want to build one big machine. We want to show that by using a cluster of computer, maybe we can uh, scale the workload, okay, to and distribute workload to, to many, many different machines, and we have the process scheduler. Each one was machine is not that powerful, okay? Actually, you can see that by uh, the CPU and the memory is quite off the shelf computer. And yeah, we, we, we have this configuration right now. And if we have enough uh, resources and we can show that the open data cube is very useful, we can scale up this configuration easily. Okay, by the way, we connect to a huge storage about 41 terabyte and could be more, okay, in the future. Now we have 41 terabytes here in Thailand. 
Um, we learn how to ingest the data, not only Sentinel-2, but the Landsat, MODIS, and Probal v Okay, here are the specification. Okay, the resolution, update frequency. Okay, from uh, this period to that period, and the number of uh, storage. Okay, the, the terabyte that required for each uh, satellite. As you can see, that the Sentinel-2 is quite big. Okay, so the, the, the satellite images for Sentinel-2 is very huge. Okay, we want to do this by automatically uh, scheduler, not not by manually download it, and that requires some work. Okay, we need to also index and ingest to to the OTC, which is quite useful. So we don't need to spend so much time on the data population. Next is the virtual product. Okay, virtual product means something like. Uh, NDVI, okay, instead of getting NDVI directly from the sources, we, the formula, the equation itself is quite simple, but how can we compute that vegetation index? Okay, not only NDVI could be something else that nobody has done before. Okay, we can do that easily, okay, based on our script that we developed here too. Uh, we can do some query to the product that we built, okay, so that we can distribute the task, okay, so many, to the many, many slaves that could uh, expand. After this, if, if, if this kind of concept work, okay, instead of seven, we could have like 10 or 20 or 100 of workers, okay, that, that was our expectation, okay. Yeah, and return the query back to the user. Next one, before I go on to uh, the application on Thailand side, uh, we every application that I want to present here later on will have the accuracy assessment in, in three of these numbers. Accuracy itself, I, I need to spend some time on this, especially for people not familiar with the uh, classification errors, okay? True positive, true positive, what does it mean? It's something that we say it positive, it's, it's as it is, okay? Be sure that it is and it's right. That's the why it means true, okay? True negative is also the right thing that we say no, it's not and it's actually not, okay? For negative mean we said that it's not, but we we are not right. <laughs> okay, we are wrong. Okay, again, for positive is mean we think it right, but we are wrong. Okay, we positive but it's false. Okay. In short, um, the accuracy means that we do both the true positive and true negative. It's very high number out of everything else, okay? Precision concentrate on just the true positive over true positive plus four positive, only the positive part, okay? But recall, recall is true positive over true positive and four negative, okay? I just cut this part from Wikipedia. So I hope just looking at the uh, diagram here will make a lot of more sense. All right. In short, we need all three numbers very high, closer to 100. That is the best. That's the base of uh, everything else in, th in theory. That's the ideal. But you will see, we will get some number higher than the other. <laughs> All right. Next one is why we are doing this uh, kind of research. One important um, research area that is quite difficult, okay, very difficult, is how to predict yield of any crops. All right, I think no, nobody is quite confident about this. The yield itself consists of two major parts: the area of the plantation, 
okay, the crop area, and the yield per unit area. Consider this, if yield of rice, okay, how many tons, how many tons you can get out of that area at the harvest season, okay? You need to know how large the area, okay, is. For, for example, um, could be 100 million, right? That's the whole country, <laughs> something like that, okay? And you need to know the yield per unit area or something like how many ton per square kilometer or how many ton per right in Thailand. Actually, this formula, okay, mathematically have to be some, the summation yield equal to summation of area I times yield per unit area I. Because, because each area will have different, okay, yield per unit area values, okay? different yield. And you can imagine that um, for each pixel in the satellite images, we need to compute uh, the area that's easy, but the yield per unit area that's quite varying and different, quite difficult a lot. Next will be the chain vector analysis for petty field detection. This morning, um, we've learned from, from NALABS that Open data cube can be useful for this kind of analysis. And this type of analysis for rice, we basically need a duration. We need two dates, okay? Two dates, the before and after, okay? For the in season rice in Thailand, the planting uh, could be between anywhere from March to October, and harvesting in like December, February. This is just looking through Google. But the off-season rice is for irrigated area only and can be in, uh, harvest approximately three months after planting. The K1 is our internal um, application, okay? After we ingest the data, the satellite image images from four different data sources, okay? We can pick up the location, okay, and asking for, for example, the NDVI value of that location and probably the historical value of that vegetation index back up to five years, something like this, okay? For example, if we are focusing on one location in Supanburi province, okay, that particular area, maybe like 200 square kilometer. We can see the LAI signal of the probar V, okay? Something similar to this. This historical data go back five years from now, okay? Now is in the more right most, <laughs> okay? Of, of the picture, okay, go back there. We can see something up and down like that, and we will know immediately that if that particular point is the patty field, okay, maybe they start growing rice sometime in September, and the plant and the plant grow, okay, probably very high sometime during uh, that month, okay, the peak. But, but for rice, that actually lies no longer than, than four months, okay? So we have two dates now. Luckily, in another system that uh, our team has been developing is called Archimap. Okay? Archimap is the work of uh, Ministry of uh, Agriculture, okay, and cooperatives. And we, in Ministry of, Ministry of Science Technology, and this is the, the big project between these two ministries. Uh, yes, we can have something called the land use, okay, petty field or rice land use, and we we use it at the cloud tools, okay? I know there's some question that is it believable or not, but we have something, <laughs> something we that we can compare with the thing about this, okay? So we use the land use 
uh, data in Archimap as the cloud tools because the land use here has been validated many, many times okay, by people uh, going to that area and make a survey and come back to the office, digitize the data and produce this kind of layer. Okay. Um, I'm not going to spend so much time on, on the chain vector. This is the, the, the workflow. Okay, usually we need to compute the virtual product, uh, the virtual product, okay, either NDVI and DWI, and then the chain, ve chain magnitude vector and chain direction vector. Okay, we use two of them to compute the change and then we detect the clock using the vegetation index and we remove some small object and at the end of the uh, algorithm, okay. Chain magnitude according to this formula, the chain angle according to this formula. And this is just a demonstration to show you that if we take in the date sometime in October, which is the bare land, and another period in uh, December, okay, representing some petty field growing up, the chain angle and the chain angle of the two separate date, okay, will be according to this picture. By the way, uh, Wong Nalet will show you in, in Python Jupyter Notebooks, okay, shortly after this, we use the NDVI of the two days, the NDWI, and we remove some small object using mathematical morphologies, and we detect the petty field Okay, here's come the uh, confusion matrix, that's what they call, okay, to produce the accuracy assessment. The 74.4% 74, 74 come after we produce the two positive numbers, four positive number, four negative, and two negative numbers according to uh, the result, okay, pixel by pixel. You can see that it's not bad, okay, it's not bad for first attempt. Okay, accuracy up to 74.5% precision, very high, but we call need some work, okay, 64%. The reason I want to show you this is we can improve this result by using more sophisticated method or anything else, but to show all of you that uh, to do this kind of work using DataCube is quite simple, okay, it's quite simple. In conclusion for this work, we think that NDVI and LAI have determined the period that is suitable for chain vector analysis, but the threshold selection is very important, okay? It's not the fixed threshold. Some, somehow we need to uh, know how to change this value automatically. And threshold selection is important. A single value is not practical. Okay, and most of the rice field, especially in the central part of Thailand, are covered in cloud during the raining season. Raining season. Okay, and uh, the scalability of this work for the whole country is still under investigation. Um, I like to uh, point out that actually in Thailand, there's a similar work here by by Chista. Okay, Chista. And it's very helpful, actually, I like this work a lot. Um, we want to see that our result and this the result going hand in hand or not, okay? But don't, don't, I, I don't think that comparing uh, each three of them is, uh, is fair, okay? We don't know, actually, we don't know the real cloud truth, <laughs> we just, believe that Agrimap is the cloud tool, but probably there's some error in Agrimap land use too. Okay, so don't, don't, don't think that the higher or lower number is better or worse, but if we think some number is correct, okay, like the Agrimap uh, land use there, we can see some different numbers, okay. This the, uh, rice field area, the accuracy is 55%, but precision is very high. 
Okay, precision is very high. Recall very low. Remember what I see, what I said earlier. If all of three numbers high, that means very good. If some number is very high, that means there's some bias. Okay, we need to do some work. Meanwhile, the CVA approach, okay, it quite stable in that sense that nothing is very high, nothing is very low. Okay, just some pretty many number. Don't 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 think that any one of them is more accurate than the other unless we have to go into the field, okay, and check check the uh, crop health and cut the crop, check the biomass, that when we know the truth, the real truth, okay. Next, I'd like to pass the uh, demonstration to, to my assistant, Kun Wong Nalet, so that you can see that all of this work can be done uh, by using the Jupyter notebook that you, most of you, I think or some of you are familiar already. Okay, so let me stop my slide now. Up. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hope you guys hear me clearly. So let me share my screen first. This one. Okay, now this is my Jupyter notebook that uh, all of this is implementation of uh, the right paddy field detection using the chain vector analysis. Uh, and I, we, for today, we will walk to this uh, Jupyter notebook, let's say this notebook and execute it like block by block. So at first, uh, I just put on the flow chart. Like the good thing of the Jupyter notebook is like you can create the document light and embed your code into this notebook. And after that, uh, if you want to export into the PDF file or the latex thing, it should be a lot easier than go to the the uh, word document and typing everything down. So like we can done many things in one place. So let's go to the first block. Uh, this is the starting of the implementation. First, we need to put down everything, the, all the library that require for, for this work. So as you can see, like we have the data queue, we have the Fiona, Fiona is for processing the, the share file and OSGO, the GDO, this is for the raster. Uh, and X-ray, NumPy, Pandas, yeah. And also the SK, uh, SK image. This one is for the image processing. Okay. Uh, okay, I need to run it first. So after we run this block, everything is import to the notebook. And the next step, uh, this is my predefined function for doing things in, in this work. Like the first one is for just drawing the RGB image. So run it. This one is for generating cow mass. Uh, create a pixel mosaic. Uh, and this one is the rasterization function just for converting the, the shape file, the ESRI shape file into the, the raster. It will be very useful for the uh, accuracy assessment. Okay, and this is the accuracy assessment function. So let's go to the detail a little. So all of this is just counting the, the, the number of pixels and matched by the ground truth data and, and our predicted data. So just counting like which one is the true positive, which one is the true negative, false positive, false negative. And after that, calculate the accuracy, precision, and recall, and print it out. Yeah, that's it. So, okay, let's say this is the, the my constant. So after like, because of the unit of the counting is, is the number of pixels. So we want to change to square kilometer. So we need to, to do investigation. So like uh, measure 
uh, how large of our pixel in the, the satellite images. It depends on the, the resolution of the images data from the satellite. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can zoom it. <laughs> okay. Uh, am I right? Okay, it's already run. Here, this is the starting step of, of the, the chain vector analysis. First thing is we need to query the data from the data queue. So this is the defining the, the extent, the time, and the band that we want for, for the work. Right? So this is the latitude and longitude extent for Mung Supanburi province. And we just query all band that Sentinel data have, like, and it will export to the X-ray forest. Yeah, and this slide just tell the data queue, like we want the, the Sentinel data. And initialize the data queue instant. And after that, we load the data using all the defining parameter. So we have two data set. The first one is from the December, oh no, <laughs> the October of, of, of 2019. Like this is the representing of the bare land. Right? And the second one, from December of 2019. This one is representing like the, the growing uh, petty field. So I'm gonna run it. It might take a couple seconds for loading the data from the data queue into this notebook. But by the way, all of this we running on the, the browser, the web browser and, and all the job is executing in the, the Taiwan data queue cluster. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, this one is already executed. So uh, let me show you something. Uh, like after we got the data, let's say if we want to inspect the, the structure of the data set, we can done it easily on the notebook, just typing the command. I want to see the data test to structure and executing. After that, the notebook will show the structure of the data set, like it show the dimension uh, and the coordinate system, the X10 and the variable. This is all the band we got from the data queue. And if we want to see the detail, yes, we can see it. So it's just a demo, yeah. After that, when we got two data set from the, the before and after, okay, in, in, in this notebook, we call it the prior and the later. So we need to create the mosaic images of that and draw it to the notebook. And you can see, I just call the, the my predefined function. And this is the two image the two color images from uh, the left hand side is the, the bare land representation, as you can see, like the, the darker pixel that represent the bare land. And on the right side is the images that taken on the December. Uh, the darker pixel already turned into green. Yeah, this is should be the, the petty field. And, and let's see what, what, what we got in our algorithm. Uh, the next thing is, uh, <laughs> I just call it the bonus content I want to show you is because of the Sentinel data is multispectral, we can like working out on the color composite to, to, to see uh, like the different kind of images. Like the first one is the, the infrared color here. Uh, the infrared color use the NIR band, the red and green color, uh, which means the, the, the infrared is uh, representing the, the dense of the uh, chlorophyll in the plant. So, which means like the red color uh, representing the vegetation in the image. And like for the 
darker pixel, which means it, it might be the bare land or the non vegetation, but for the urban urban area, it will be the white pixel. As you can see in the middle of this image is Mueang Supanburi. So, so this is like the downtown in, in, in Supanburi. It's all of them is the most white pixel. And the next one is the short wave infrared. Uh, this one is like another kind of representation of the vegetation too, but use the different band. This is agriculture composite. Uh, this one used SWIR, the near infrared and blue. Uh, two of these like popularly for monitor the health of the crop because like the short wave and near infrared uh, representing the, the dense of the, the chlorophyll. And okay, let's move on to the, the our work. This is the Battlefield detection algorithm. Uh, as Dr. Napadon already said, like we use the, the virtual product of the satellite image and the chain vector analysis to combine three images together to, to, to get the petty field. Like this is how we calculate the chain magnitude in Jupyter notebook. Like just implementing that, that equation. The difference of the blue band, the green band, red band, and near infrared band, like all four band are just combined together. And for the chain angle, same, this is just the implementation of this equation. And now we got that two uh, vector, and this is how we are representing as the image. This is the chain magnitude. This is the chain vector. For the code, like we just use the, the matplotlib function, like do the IM show the vector, two vector, and show it and plot it into the notebook. And, and we can see it as the image. So uh, let's see the, the chain magnitude and chain vector, as you can see, like for the high value of magnitude and high value of, of, of chain angle is represented by the yellow. And for the darker pixel, like for the blue and green is the lowest value, the lower value. And after that, we merge this vector together for getting the, the, the final chain product by using the test show and this one is, I want to show another good thing of the, the Jupyter notebook, like we can create a widget for do the interaction with the input into the, and, and it will recalculate the, the chain vector. So like at first I use this widget to, to justify the, to adjust the threshold of the, the length and threshold of the angle. And And it will recalculate after we change the value. Yeah, if we can put a lot of the higher value in chain angle, like if we we will got nothing, but for the lowest value. I'll give them a minute. <laughs> Ah, here, this is the, the chain. But by the way, after the experiment, like we got the final test show for this experiment. Like here for the length test show, uh, we just use the 750 and the angle test show, we use like the, the just five for that. And this is this, this line of code just for do the binary, 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 uh, the binarize, the 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 two, that two of the chain vector, the the magnitude and angle, and and after that we get the final chain. Okay, here this is our final chain product. Okay, and we will use this image later. 
the next step is do the, the virtual product calculation. Uh, this one is the NDWI, the normalized different water index. Uh, the meaning of NDWI is representing the, the water in the image of like uh, each pixel is representing the content in the water body, body like using the NIR and, and green web link. So we just implement this equation into the code. And this is our uh, final NDWI. Okay, uh, in this experiment, we use the, the later NDWI and the later uh, NDVI for getting the patty field area. For NDWI, we, do, we need to use NDWI because we, we need to separate the water area in the picture. Moving out, remove the, 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 the picture that represents the water, like the river, the canal, the pond, uh, anything that's not the vegetation. And another thing is the, ND, the NDVI, the normalized different vegetation index. This one, it represents the, the, the health of crop. Yeah. Uh, the higher value, this means like the dense of the, the canopy. Okay, using the NIR and red band to calculate it, as Dr. Nopadon already said. So after we got the NDWI, we just like classify it to get the, the vegetation area. Like for the darker pixel, it represents the, the vegetation area, but another pixel is non-vegetation. So which means we already got the the vegetation, the vegetation area in the images, but we just know that is that the, the patty field or another vegetation. Uh, another one we have is the NDWI that represent the water. So we will use that data for remove the some pixel that represent the water out. And the another one we have is the chain vector. That's one it represent the 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 pixel that chain from the bare land to, to the patty field. So we just mask, masking these uh, three images together using the, the multiply product in the image processing. And after that, we got the, the patty field. But this one needs, uh, we, we need to do the, the small object remove and do the binarization. So this is the, the final product. Like we do the small object removal by this line of code. Yeah, we already have the morphology function that form the SK image. And yes, this is our final product. The next box is the, in case of we need to export the, uh, oh, this is the typo, sorry. <laughs> export thing really so. Oops. Okay. So let's say if you want to export the final, our final patty field, the detected patty field. Uh, to another format like the GOTIF or ESRI shape file that we might be use that data outside the Jupyter notebook or the for the future work, we can do it. Not that hard. Just like change that final product into the XRA data format and initialize the, the core ordinate system of, of that images. And after that, we export. Oh, sorry, we need to run this line of code first. <laughs> then we just export. Just use the our like predefined function, the right to tip from XR. Uh, this one is, I think, is the the embedded function from from Gdo rivalry. And this one is the example if we want to export that raster into the, 
ESRI shape file, we just call the GDO polygonal function. And we will got that to data set uh, in the directory of the Jupyter Notebook and we can download it to use it later. Uh, this is the last part of my demo. This is the uh, accuracy assessment. So, which means we already have the ground truth data. This is the ref our reference from the land development department. Okay, and this is our output image that we just exported. And yes, I call the my 3D5 function for doing the rasterization and, and accuracy assessment. Okay, let's execute it. Give them a minute. Right. Why, why we are waiting, right? No. What we did in this function is just counting the, the number of pixels, like how many pixels we have for the two positive, two negative, four positive, four negative. Yeah, and, and this is the printout. I just calculated into the transform it into square kilometer here. Like our tie area, the total tie area is uh, about 200 square kilometer. For the ground tooth petty field, we have like, it's about like 118 square kilometer and our detected petty field, we got 89.17 square kilometer. And if we separate that, uh, our, our result into two positive, four positive, two negative, four positive, and calculate the accuracy, the precision and recall using this equation, as I show you, this will be, yeah, this is our final results. And this is just the, the plotting of the, the ground truth data uh, comparing to our detected area. Okay, that's all. Uh, call slide in cup. Okay. Yeah, back to me. <laughs> Thank you, Fluke, and I hope all of you can see the uh, power okay of the the data cube and the Jupyter notebook for spatial data, geospatial data analysis. Next, I believe I can go very fast because all of the presentation will go to similar manners, uh, like how to do chain vector analysis for sugarcane this time. Okay, just some short story. The sugarcane is the one year crop, all right? The planting mostly in rainy season and a year after that, it will be going to the harvest season. And we pick the Gampang Pet District, which is very uh, popular, very famous area for, for sugarcane, about 130 square kilometer. Um, again, we make use of the Probal V, LAI and, NDVI, <laughs> LAI and NDVI of Probal V because the signal there is very clear, okay, to pick up uh, two separate dates to do the chain vector analysis. And we have the ground suit again from Archimap, this time using the sugarcane land use. And as you can see, there's some bare land in uh, the April of 2019. But after that, in October of the same year, you can see some green, okay? Some plantation where they have the sugarcane, by the way. Um, we compute the change magnitude, we compute the NDVI vegetation index over that area. And after small object removal, we have this result, okay? For sugarcane, we have uh, not, not better than rice, rice is much better, about 10% better. Here we have about 65% accuracy, okay? 
which means sugarcane is harder, more difficult plant to, to do the uh, uh, area detection. But we will improve the result after this. Remember that this is just six months of work and we learn quite a lot. Another approach which could be useful, and I mentioned earlier that it is the traditional way of doing remote sensing, okay, which means we pick up the RGB band okay, and mix give some weight to the channel, all three channels, so that some color will be much more pronounced for each particular pen. In here, we uh, focus on three crops at the same time, which is rice, sugarcane, and cassava. For sugarcane, oh, let me remove. Excuse me. For quick result, after we selecting the most appropriate threshold for red, green, and blue, okay, sugar cane, we have 75% accuracy. Okay, not too bad. Okay, not too bad. For remember that all three crops are in the same area, okay, in the same area. For cassava, we have up to 88% accuracy, but very low precision. So don't believe that this result is good, okay? Don't trust one number. For rice, okay, we have again high accuracy but low precision, okay? I believe that after uh, we've experimented with a few, okay, algorithms for, for area, crop area detection, sometimes this work is called crop mapping, okay, crop mapping. We need to combine several approaches together, okay? And I think for the next six months, we will begin experiment more with the complex and advanced model, like the machine learning and some other uh, AI approach, okay? Um, that will be all for our presentation. Thank you very much. I take question and answer if you have anything, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nopadon and Dr. Wong Nared, uh, for your Taiwan Data Q experience sharing with us today. And so now we come to the last part uh, for the Q&A section. If you have any question to our speakers, so please feel free to write in the chat box, the Q&A chat box. Sorry, may I have some comment? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Sure. Okay. Please. So, uh, because I think that uh, maybe you have a very good result in the sugar cane detection, and uh, uh, is that possible to share some ground truth data to us? Because we also have the 2019 data already in the data cube. So, I think maybe we can try uh, some other method and uh, see if we can have a different kind of or improved accuracy, something like that. No problem, David. For research work, we can exchange and collaborate. I'd like to hear your comment and probably share, share the result. Okay. okay. And probably improve upon this. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anything else? We have one more question from the audience. Put 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 in Angkit. So some 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 class of the attendees have some questions about how to apply these uh the data cube to another province in Thailand. Uh, what they can work with the 
next take with Dr. Nupadon or with the NALAP data queue? Uh, for, for me, I have no problem. <laughs> you can contact me, okay? And you can contact David too. <laughs> I don't know if, if David is available or not. <laughs> it, yes, I have a lot of questions for the attendees that they interested to use this the data kill, but they not not sure that they can work with the next tech or we can do the third party together between the the the, the agency and the next tech and data kill from uh, from from NALAB or something like that. Yeah, how about this? Uh... Since uh, Kun Tei, yeah, Kun Tei is the representative of, of an SPO, and she's also uh, has an office in at NASDA. Okay, you can contact Kun Chachanan Kun Tei, okay, and express your interest. And then she will find some, some way, okay, either to, to approach uh, me, okay, at NECTEC or or David as the at the NSPO, okay, whichever one is more appropriate. We at Nectech we have small cube right now. We don't have sophisticated uh, facility yet. So some problem could be run on our cube, but for bigger problem, okay, you might need to consider uh, TWDC. Uh, we have a more question in the Q and A box. Can you see that? Yes, I see one question from uh, Kun Somarat. Like, uh, I will repeat the question first. Like uh, Kun Somarat asked me, like Sentinel Two Data is an optic platform which is highly affected by the cloud covering, especially during the right going season. What have we done in resolving this issue? Like to be honest, like in this step. We selecting the the off season. Uh, I mean the the off season patty field because we face this problem too, and this is very very important problem. We need to solve it. But like in our future work, we might use like the another band like the 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 micro how to call it like S S A R the microwave spectrum something like that that doesn't affect by the by the cloud for resolve that and hopefully we can detecting the the in season patty field in the future. Yep. And the addition of the number we face similar problem. Okay. Yeah yeah we know the Sentinel 2 is optical and I and David already discussed uh, last month that we might try to do the microwave the SAR approach in the future. Okay. Anyway, the board approach has some trade-off, and we, we will see what we can do. Okay, Thailand uh, region faced with difficult problem of the cloud cover. Cloud cover. There's another question from Ajahn Atashai. Okay, saying that is it possible to organize a training workshop in Thailand for TWDC users? Well, I think anything is possible. Anything is possible. Uh, we, we can talk about this later, okay? Um, okay, so uh, do we have any more questions? So we maybe we wait for a few minutes uh, in case that there is more question. Uh, it's also possible to write in Thai language if you have any more question. We have another question. 
Uh, okay. Do any of you have experience using soy moisture data? Excuse me. Uh, look like uh, it's a question that we been discussed last time too about the soil moisture. And can you explain a little bit about the soil moisture products nowadays and probably which uh, approach, like the SARS data for approximate the soil moisture, something like that? Please. Okay. Um, for. Um... For a parameter of soil moisture, I think uh, I think there is a lot of passive microwave satellite can uh, use to derive uh, uh, soil moisture data, and I think most of them already have product. That means that there is already uh, soil moisture models, and you don't have to do the uh, uh, I mean the retrieval by yourself. You can just download the soil moisture data uh, from the in, uh, from the I mean from the website or responding website. But for microwave, uh, a passive microwave data, I mean the soil moisture derived by uh, passive microwave uh, sensors, uh, the resolution is very low. Sometimes it's uh, one kilometer. Uh, uh, 10 kilometers resolutions, that is not very high. And uh, uh, as far as I know, we can use LST to derive uh, soil moisture. If you can use LST, land surface temperatures, if you can, because for land surface temperatures, normally uh, for landscape data, it is around uh, 100 meters. So that should be, the resolution should be much higher than passive microwaves. And uh, but if you want to use LST uh, to, I mean, to derive so much data, you have to do some correlation analysis and uh, uh, and then some geostatistic analysis. Then you can uh, use uh, the mic microwave, a passive microwave so much, and then as a basis to derive a. Uh, uh, so much from LST. Actually, we have done this part before uh, for soil moisture detection uh, around, I mean, in Central America areas. The, 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 the result is quite positive. So uh, if you want to have for a high resolution so, soil moisture data, maybe we can consider... Uh... Hello? <laughs> Maybe we can consider a uh, uh, similar uh, method. Uh, then, uh, then in that way, maybe you can have a uh, uh, higher resolution so much data. Because I think if you just use uh, uh, ten meter, a uh, ten kilometer resolution so much data, maybe, maybe, maybe I think the resolution may be quite not enough for I mean detail. Uh, for example, the year, uh, the, the, the year yeah. estimation, something like that. Okay. Higher, higher, higher. Okay. So I don't know if I answered your questions. <laughs> Thank you for your answer, Dr. Shang. Okay. And also we have because a notification that... <laughs> Another question from Kun Atashai about the accuracy assessment. Uh, he asked that uh, you are using the three parameter accuracy precision recall. Any relationship to the procedure? user and overall accuracies uh, okay the accuracy position recall is for uh, technical uh, analysis okay if 
you are thinking in terms of which one is more uh, useful for for people okay for people uh, I, I think the overall accuracy should be the accuracy itself because it's compute using all the four numbers together okay but just just one number accuracy consider including all the true positive to negative or positive to negative okay represent everything but sometimes you will have bias for example what happened if the predictor okay predict everything as positive okay you will not have anything negative at all okay that's totally biased it's not quite fair okay so either use accuracy by itself as one number using just one number okay people will not ask question okay low or high or if you use precision you must use recall as well okay to represent that okay it's not biased either the negative or positive but try to balance everything out that that's my experience Thank you for your answer, Dr. Nopadon. Mm. Uh, it seems that we don't have any more questions from the audience. Then should we proceed to the last section? Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so now, on behalf of NASDAQ and NALAB, we would like to thank all the speaker and audience for your kind interest and participation to this workshop today. And we apologize for any error and inconvenience that happened today. One again, thank you and hope to see you all in the next uh, section in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>